You can't see me? Huh? Can you hear me? Can you guys see me now? Give me a one if you can see me, if you can hear me. Oh, man. <laughs> I've been talking to this camera by myself this whole time. <laughs> what the fuck? Are you serious? <laughs> oh, man. I've been going off on this camera alone for this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh no <laughs> got the ones ripping I see the ones thank you guys for letting me know oh, got my partner in crime helping me out too this is crazy oh man guys what do you guys think about that damn episode tonight <laughs> was it worth it were you guys this whole season basically built up to this one episode. You do realize that. Like, this whole time we've been watching has been built up to this one episode, the one confrontation between Cody <laughs> and Mary. The Legion of Doom came together and they broke up like... <laughs> they broke up like the Beatles. You know what I mean? All over... <laughs> all over Robin. <laughs> She's the Yoko Ono of the Brown family. She broke the whole thing up. Oh, man. I tell you what, though. <sighs> I, I I don't want to even say... And here's the crazy part. And this is me. This is me. I don't even think that the way they did this season was worth that. Like, I, I enjoyed it. Like, I thought, like, there was a couple points in there. I was like, get his ass, Mary. Do that thing. Put it on them. Show them what you're working with. Let's see that. You know what I mean? Because they, the whole time, like this whole time since the show started, they always talked about what a big B Mary is. Like, oh, she's such a nasty one. She's so mean. I was like, I want to see that Mary. And it's ironic to me that when Christine was talking about leaving, <laughs> Cody kept trying to push Mary into like being nasty to, about Christine, being nasty to Janelle when, you know, they sitting at, at uh, her house and with Janelle and Robin and they trying to talk about Mary, uh, Christine and they trying to find out where Janelle is because she's hanging out with Christine and Cody's looking at her like, be mean, Mary, come on, Mary, get up. It is it's funny to me that the one time Mary starts to actually show that meanness is when she's sitting there with Cody. <laughs> 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 Cam Gilbertson with the five out super chat. Hey, calling Saab and Yoko Ona is totally unfair to Yoko. <laughs> I know, right? At least bro Yoko broke up like a legendary band. Like Robin just came in there and just broke up a family that was already kind of falling apart because their leader wasn't up to the charge. Yeah, Christine K said, lawyer up, OG3. You know what? Here's the crazy part. I kind of heard some some uh, grumblings in that exchange. Oh, it said, please slow the chat down. I don't know how to do that. Uh, let me see. Thank you, Rochelle J, for the super chat. I'm trying to figure out how to slow the chat down. I'll figure it out. But uh, <laughs> I did hear some grumblings about them, you know, kind of uh, talking about uh, lawyers and the prospect of bringing in some people to actually survey the property, get a true evaluation of the property so that that way they can get a fair breakdown on what the property is going to be worth, what it's not going to be worth. I thought that that in and of itself was noteworthy. I thought that that's what was, that's definitely when uh, they were going to bring the heat. Because they talk about bringing people in. So, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to see if I can slow this thing down a little bit. So that that way everybody can read what's going on. Because everybody's fired up tonight. Everybody fired up. Make sure you check. Because I'm going to... Look. Now you know that when I come in, I like to bring them. So, tomorrow when I, I'm going to go through tonight, I got to... 
you know, try to cut some stuff together either tomorrow or Tuesday, I'm going to be releasing a video where I'm going to talk more in depth about this. I'm bringing receipts. I'm talking about previous episodes where you start putting it together because I'm telling you guys, this whole thing has been planned from the beginning. We about to get into it in a minute where we're going to talk about like how Coyote Pass has been planned from the outset. But I'm telling you, like, because you can see it coming from a mile away that this is what they've always kind of planned. Like, the Coyote plan thing has always been a plan. Uh, YouTube is my time machine with the $5 super chat. So, basically, Robin knew from the start that Cody didn't love his wives but didn't want to be on the receiving end. Oh, absolutely. absolutely, freaking lutely And I'm going to take it to a different place because I did catch that. I did catch that time machine. I caught that, and I'm going to throw it right back at you with, some, with a little more pepper. With a little more pepper. We're going to talk about that. Cam Gilbertson with the $5 Super Chat. Our, I'll be here on my knees. Archer, voice. <laughs> hey, for raising. <laughs> hey, phrasing. I do remember that. <laughs> But yeah, man. Oh, so let me see if I can slow this chat down. I got to figure out how to do it. But um, let's just get into it because I'm, I'm not going to hold you guys all crazy like I normally do. But let's talk about it. First, before we get into the, the juicy, juicy stuff of Cody, Mary, and Robin out there on Coyote Pass, uh, Thank you, Michelle Clark, with the $10 Super Chat. Holla at your boy, showing love, showing love. Oh, Layla C, happy to catch James Live. I'm happy you're here, Layla C. Oh, where's my purple short? I wore mine. Just kidding. Crazy A, A, Z. Look, oh, you know what? I was catching some major crap about my dang old purple shirt. This, is, it looks blue still. Damn it. <laughs> It's the lights. It's the lights. I if that's where it says color purple on the front, people. It's from the play. It's from the stage play, color purple. It says color purple on the front. It was a purple shirt. It wasn't I know it looked blue. I feel like Robin. <laughs> I know what your eyes say, but I'm telling you what it was. <laughs> I feel like I'm Robin and Cody. <laughs> Emma, are we not doing phrasing anymore? Yeah, we don't phrase it. We don't pause. <laughs> but when I was watching the episode, just to talk about the episode, guys, because I'm having too much fun here. Um, first things first, let's talk about Christine and Janelle. Then we're going to move into the foolishness of Mary and Dodo Head. All right. So Christine and Janelle, <laughs> I thought it was funny. They had a whole t discussion about going to school and how... They were trying to limit uh, these young ladies' ability to go to school. Yeah, girls, don't worry about going to school. Worry about getting married. If the world is ending, why am I trying to get married? <laughs> Shouldn't I be praying? I guess in their religion, like, try to get married so you can make a bigger house, you know. But I always thought that was funny. Like, it's just a way for them. Like, again, education for a lot of people, especially historically, was a means and a method in which people could be able to advance themselves and maybe provide for themselves. Like this was a way for these women to be independent of their husbands. Uh, so if things didn't work out, they had something to rely on, something to fall back on, something that they could pursue themselves that was independent of their family and they could survive independent of their family. So in true form and fashion, it makes perfect sense that these guys would tell these young ladies, yeah, don't go to school. My question is, I wonder how many of the guys who were part of that church we're going to taking classes at the co at the community college, at the universities when the world was ending. While these ladies are being told, don't go to school, don't try to perfect any kind of craft or professionalism, don't develop any kind of work history because the world's going to be over in a couple years. Meanwhile, fellas, make sure you get your degrees. So, you, so and this is where it kind of comes in, where you have to watch... Um, what people are doing, not just what they saying. You know, you know what I mean? Because sometimes people will tell you stuff and trip you up. Big shout out to Lisa, the housewife with the dollar ninety nine super chat. Uh best episode so far. Mine it is. <laughs> I will say this. It was the best episode for Mary. 
that hands down the best episode for Mary. Because when I watch this, these shows, I get tired of watching Mary every episode sitting there like a uh, like a like a like a wounded duck. You know, like after a while, it's like watching a pistol a puppy get pistol whipped. Like it's just cruel. You know, it's like watching somebody kick kittens down the steps. Like, what are we doing? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, it's, it's so abusive that it's, it's, I don't even want to be a part of it as I'm watching as a, as a, uh, as a viewer, as an audience member, I feel like I'm doing it too. Like I'm encouraging this bad behavior by watching this stuff. So I am glad of the, uh, the full circle though, where I saw Mary down I saw Mary get beat down and I saw her rise up out of that, that, uh, bad situation and take her power back. So I'm very happy about that. Like, don't get it twisted. Like, I think she did a great job. Um, the next thing I wanted to say about Christina Janelle, then we get into the foolishness. Okay. Christina Janelle talked about, uh, you know, Janelle specifically said that her kids and Christine's kids said all the time that they were missing Robin's kids. And I thought that that was unfortunate because, you know, Robin is the one keeping them kids apart from the family. And it's cruel. And to be honest with you, it's damn close to child abuse, if not abusive, fully abusive. And I am close to abuse. It's well into it because you encourage these kids to develop these relationships, these tight bonds with these kids, insisting that they're going to be your brothers and sisters. This is your new family. These are the ones that you're going to spend the rest of eternity with because you guys are going to be so close. You're going to be thick as thieves. These are your best friends, et cetera, et cetera. Then you turn right around and tell these same kids, yeah, none of them like you. They always hated your guts. They always jealous of you. They talking so much crap about you behind your back. You wouldn't even believe it. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, that's so, like, <laughs> like how to mess your kid up 101. You know what I mean? Like, how... <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who you think loves you, they don't love you. I'm the only one who loves you. I'm the only one who's going to take care of you. That's essentially what uh, I feel like Robin is saying to her kids every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Jennifer Ray Rayo said, said, the world is ending. <laughs> so forget school, but have all the babies you can. Like, what? <laughs> I don't want my kids to, you know, I want to have more babies and the world going to be on fire so I can watch them burn, you lunatics. Yeah, I agree with jo Julie, uh, Julie Rourke, who said, uh, I wish Mary wouldn't laugh out loud after she says something. Right, I think that's kind of her nervous tick, though, in fairness. Like, I think she's nervous about taking a position or ha making a stand, so she just tries to play it off like a joke. I wish too. Like I agree with you. I wish she didn't. Uh, Rochelle J, five dollars super chat. Shirt was purple. My mom was epileptic. Now pass. Oh, oh wow. So sorry to hear that. Even she said it was purple. Slam that like for James, please. <laughs> yes, please slam that like for James. Slam that like. Let the world know that we like it. <laughs> Oh man, I did, I got to figure out how to slow this thing down. I'm going to figure out, guys, I'm going to put this on the screen too so you guys will be able to see it as you're watching the screen. You won't have to keep going to the bottom to watch it. But guys, I know why you came. I know why you came. Because it's why I'm here. Because I knew when I saw the, the trailers of this damn thing, I looked at this episode and I know some of y'all was with me. Y'all was in the same boat, the Titanic, and we was... <laughs> We were there playing, you know, on the deck <laughs> and watching this, this craziness go down. And I got to tell you, when I was watching that thing, I was sitting there saying to myself, what in the French fried fuck is going on? Like, this makes no sense. <laughs> like, what is, what the hell is happening? And I apologize. Like, I'll, it's going to be some cussing in this one. Like, you know what I mean? I can't get around it. Like, this is just, it was so ridiculous. <laughs> like, this too, man. Cody is a crazy person. He is, he is certifiably nuts. Like this dude, like I've never seen anybody who has accomplished so little be so confident. <laughs> like, like what the shit is going on? Are you serious? Like this dude is sitting there like, yeah, by the way, here's what we going to do. He pulls up 
And just as an example, and this is what I was going to say, like, I'm going to give you guys a little taste of the video that I plan on putting out uh, either tomorrow or maybe Tuesday morning. Either way, it's going to come out. If it comes out tomorrow, it'll be Tuesday, Monday night. If not, it'll be Tuesday morning just so it can land a little better. Usually when I let, release videos at nighttime, they don't do well <laughs> at all, <laughs> at all. So I have to release it in the morning. If I can figure out how to do it and get everything done, I'll try to release it in the morning. But if not, look for it on Tuesday. But it's coming. Because I got I pulled up stuff from the past. And one of the things that I noticed is Cody had came in. At one point, it was season uh, 13, I think it was, where Cody came in and he had talked about how he had talked to a lawyer and a lawyer told him that, oh, the land is worth so much money and all we got to do, he said, don't even move there. Just build houses and you can rent it out and you'll be rich. And at that moment, I was like, Cody's stealing his land from you. <laughs> I was like, Cody is totally stealing his land from you. And Robin is sitting there smiling and, and grinning and looking around when he talked about renting the property out. She's sitting there grinning. And it was season 13 because the next season, 14, is when Robin bought that house. And, and the reason why I mention that is because if you notice, when Cody pulled up out to uh, Coyote Pass, those, those, uh, those ATVs, you can't take those on the road. She lives... Right next to Coyote Pass. Like Robin is like right down the road from Coyote Pass. Why would you build why would you buy a million dollar house down from a place when you plan on building a house? That makes zero damn sense. That makes zero sense. That's what makes it so crazy that Robin and Mary and even Christine to a point were sitting there pretending like they were gonna move on to the property. Cody bought a million dollar house down the street from where he planned on bu buying and building the house. Supposedly building on Coyote Pass. He was never building on Coyote Pass. That was never happening. That was always going to be rental properties. It was always, 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 always going to be rental properties. And it was going to be rental properties owned by Cody and Robin because he would systematically, this dude was trying to force these women out. He was systematically the whole time trying, and I've been I've been the first one saying that he was he was stealing it. Not really watching <laughs> with the two seventy nine super chat. What do you think about Suki hosting a tell all? Please, that tell all is gonna be terrible because everybody on there is gonna be afraid to talk about real stuff. Like she might be able to push Christine and Janelle. They might start dropping bombs. Mary's gonna throw bombs. You know, Cody very well may and Robin may. But they won't push them. Like, I just feel like Suki's not going to push too hard against uh, Cody. Like, she might come in and say, yeah, well, the other people said, blah, blah, blah. What do you have to say? Cody's going to tell a lie, and then Suki's not going to challenge it. Now, on one side, I say that. But I will say this. If TLC has gotten tired of Cody and Robin, then they, she might come in there with a hatchet job. She might They might have put her on the list. You know what I mean? Like, they might have gave Suki some new marching orders, told her to go in there and take, start taking some heads. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. You can kind of determine what TLC is planning to do as far as Robin and, Jan Robin and Cody are concerned by how Suki approaches them. Because Suki could go in there and just, you know, she could, she could you know, hit, you know, put a hit on them. Like, just do a hit piece. But if she doesn't, then you know that TLC ain't done with them yet. Stacey Johnson with the 499 Super Chat. Mary and Janelle need to hire lawyers and appraisers. Yes! Yes! The whole time they should have they should have got lawyers from the rip. When I like when I say that Cody went down and talked to his lawyer about renting that property out and turning it all into uh, rental properties, at that moment they should have started talking to an appraiser and they should have got their own lawyers. I mean, this is like the record industry. To be honest with you, somebody mentioned, I mentioned the Beatles, somebody mentioned Yoko, and we were going back and forth about that. But this is legitly like the record industry. Cody is going to screw them. Yeah, he is. He's going to capital screw them, screw them. Oh, Michelle Clark with a $25 super chat, 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 chat. I got to get like an echo effect, so. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Um, James, we look forward to your videos. 
I have personally used your advice in my personal life to a positive response. Oh, okay, great, great. That's why I do it. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thanks for letting me know that. Your family is blessed to have you. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. I appreciate that. You don't make me cry. You try to make my eyes sweat up in here. You try to make my eyes sweat. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, because moving forward, what I was planning on doing, just so you guys know, uh, Michelle just reminded me, uh, I'm going to start putting up a, a schedule so that that way everybody can figure out when I'm going to be on, when I go live, when I got videos coming out. And I'm going to start doing themes, especially for like some of the uh, days so I'll have like Monday, I was planning on doing like Motivation Mondays where it won't be really TLC, uh, Sister Wife stuff. I was just going to talk about motivation stuff, trying to get people moving and, and moving in a positive way to look at their lives, look reflect on their situations. Maybe, uh, if you, maybe if you don't need it, maybe one of your friends or somebody you know needs that, you know, that, uh, that insight. I'm not going to really call it advice. It's just my observations and I, cause I don't like to say I'm giving advice. Uh, <laughs> I just give my observations. You can take with it and do what you will with it. You know what I mean? Share it, hate it, love it, whatever. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, when I, when I talk about this, they need to get attorneys. They need to get attorneys. Don't sit there. And I appreciate Mary. Like, even though I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to be real. I'm going to keep it raw as they, as these people say, thank you very much. Mrs. Uh, Nareka. <laughs> With a dollar ninety nine super chat, I love it. I love record. <laughs> I love that. Um, I'm gonna keep it real. You know, I I, I grew up. I'm, I'm you know middle class family. I'm not a thug. I ain't no gangster. None of that stuff. I'm not above you know <laughs> being serious with it. But I, th that some of the stuff that I see on this show, I don't know how these people keep it together. I don't know how they keep it together. Because it would be, like, it's hard. Like, I know they out there in Arizona. They grew up in Utah. But I know there's some real ones out there in Utah. That you, the worst thing you can do is invite me to go out into a damn mountainside. We out there by ourselves. And that's why I say, when you watch this show, TLC, please do not try this shit at home. Do not do this at home. These are trained professionals. You will get fucked up. Those. <laughs> if you invite somebody out to a mountainside and you try to rip them off on some land, you will invite me. I, I, we do some land deals together. And you will invite me out to the land and then try to look me in the face and tell me that you're going to take my land. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, what we're going to do is, um, yeah. Uh, you want to walk the land? You want to walk the land? You want to take a look around? Because, uh, yeah, um, what we're going to do is Robin going to get four. Janelle going to get four. I'm going to get two. You going to get two. Then I'm going to take the last two. Okay, how that sound? What? <laughs> I'll tell you, if this shit was a drug deal, you get shot in the face. <laughs> well, you thought I wasn't going to count that shit? Like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Two but you know what I mean? And, and then he looks surprised. My favorite part is we're going to divide the land up uh, the way we was going to do it. Five parcels. Uh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> and when she said, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, wait up a damn minute. That's four and two. And you get another two. That's four. He's like, no, no, no. See, you get the two and I'll have the two. And I'll just get another two. <laughs> yeah. Two plus two is four, Cody. Four plus four is eight. That's. That gives y'all eight together. She, Janelle gets four and I get two. How does that work? And then she even dropped the bomb up by saying that, look, I've been contributing financially to the family. So she's still paying. Like she lives in. The, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, man. My mind, boy, when I heard that, my head exploded. I, I said, what? Oh, oh, man. I was ready to go to church. Hell to the no. <laughs> That's exactly where I'd have been at. Hell to the no. We, we not doing this. No, 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 no. Look, you invite me out to the side of a mountain and we out there by ourselves and you try to pull this stuff. I'm surprised that them ladies ain't picked that. Like Mary, flip that table up, put it on Cody lap and just start blasting them in the face. Are you serious? <laughs> 
I would have pulled up with a shovel in my car. <laughs> you trying to get buried out here, you nuts? <laughs> oh, man. Amy G with the bottom super chat. <laughs> How he rode off into the sunset on his ATV, though. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Got rid of another one. <laughs> Keep bringing that voice of reality, James. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Amy G. <laughs> Hell to the dog, no, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Are you insane? He said a bunch of wild stuff up there on that mountain. Like, this dude must be trying to get it. Oh, wow. Kim's finally free with the 1999 Super Chat. Love you, James. Love you back. You keep me laughing. Thank you. Oh, man. I I'm telling you, like, this. I was watching this, and I was like, there's no way. <laughs> you lucky this is made for TV, Jack. Because if this was real life, Oh, Cody went over there got his jaw cracked. Like, are you what? <laughs> and then he look in her face like he's serious. <laughs> like, like, I can't even believe you gonna question me. You how you gonna question my man? You dodo. <laughs> oh, he got confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh yeah, YouTube is my time machine with the five dollar super chat. I love how Cody tried to justify the theft by saying he has 18 children. Right? Right? Oh, I got 18 kids. Bitch, you only talked to two of them. Are you serious? <laughs> 18 kids? You gonna pull that card on me? Oh, man. See, and, that, and that's kind of a sore subject for uh, for Robin, too, or for Mary, too, because she's she saw this hell she only had one child. And then you got this one who sat here and offer me a baby, and then when I come to you and say, yeah, I want another baby, you tell me no? You look me in the face and go, up there on the side of that mountain. Oh, I, what? <laughs> We're not doing that. We're not doing that. You're not going to throw it in my face that I only had one kid for you. And then before it wasn't no big deal when she was renting places and she was keeping him in nice places because he was coming over to the house. Then it wasn't a big deal. But then all of a sudden, because she wants her fair share of the property that she helped to buy, now all of a sudden, oh, you don't have enough kids. And then, well, I got to keep the uh, the one pond land because, you know, that way everybody have access to it. How everybody got access to it when you won't even let the kids get on a damn call with you? You don't even let the boys, Janelle's boys, you don't even talk to them no more. They can't even come around your house. So you know if they had that land and he had that uh, property divided the way he wanted to, they could go into the uh, uh, that dirty ass pond. It's not even a pond. Can we stop calling that shit a pond? It's a runoff. It's a runoff. Like if you get in that water, like when I saw them babies getting in that water, and even Cody's dumbass, I was like, Dude, everybody's going to have hepatitis. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? And you know not one of them kids got health insurance. You know not one of them damn kids got health insurance. You let them jump in that water. It, <laughs> yeah, and it, they, the, 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 the land is so bad out there. And this is the craziest thing to me. The land is so bad out there. When the realtor took them out there, they told them the kids not to play in the dirt because the ground is infected. So if the ground is infected, dummies, then how the hell are you going to get into the runoff? The water is infected. The, the coyotes up there are sick. They, they should call it, it shouldn't even be called Coyote Pass. It should be <laughs> that should be called that should be called Got the Runs Pass. You know what I mean? <laughs> got the runs through you. That, that, oh. Yep. Ebony, Ebony Murphy just said the same thing. It's a runoff, not a pond. Help for everybody. Exactly. It's a damn runoff. That is not a pond. I have something similar, like on my property. I got something similar. I got a little, little thing that runs next to my house. That, like, the water comes in, like, it hits the street and it goes into that thing. And then sometimes uh, the kids down the street will come down and try to play in it. I got to kick them out, like, get the hell out of there. Are you nuts? Your parents know you down here. It's basically sewer water. Like back in the day, we used to call that the suey. Like when I'm living in the city, we used to call that the suey. Like you down there playing in suey water. For those not aware, that's called sewer water. <laughs> water, as they say. Sewer water. 
Yeah, Coyote passed away. Stella H. You got, you're right about that. The Coyote pissed. I, look, you see Robert's kids one day. I got to go back and look at it. I, I'm about to lie. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think her kids got in that damn water. I think she the oh, oh. <laughs> you're not bringing that back to my house. And you're certainly not going to get in that water and try to get in my car. So unless y'all plan on walking home, the Coyote passed away. Tina Good. See the guy, beach lady with two dollar super check. Cody passed away. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I tell you. What Cody passed away is right because that's what Cody ass would have been if he'd had me up there on that mountain and try to do me like he did Mary. You know what I mean? You got 14 acres of land. And you gonna give me two, two? Oh, bro, you must have stretched before you got out here. <laughs> you must have stretched. I must have missed it. Because there's no way in the world you're going to offer me that little bit of land and think you're going to walk out of here. Oh, hell to the no. Hell no. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> We're not doing that. Uh, or, or, you know, Mary is smart. So Mary, <laughs> Mary probably just thought to herself, like, here's what we going to do. I'm going to just sit here like I'm not crazy. I'm not going to yell and argue with you because I'm not getting nowhere doing that. So I'm just going to go ahead and absorb what you're saying, and I'm going to my attorney tomorrow. You know what I mean? Or when I walk out off this land, I'm going to be calling, making my appointment as soon as I walk up off this piece. Yeah, we need to we need to do something about this. Three people I'm calling. I'm calling an attorney. I'm calling, a, uh, I'm calling myself an appraiser to come out there and look at the land, survey it, so I know exactly what we're talking about, the value of what we're talking about. And three, I'm calling an auditor. I'm calling myself an accountant because we going to crack them books open. You know what I mean? Cody Cookums is down there cooking them damn books for that uh, Cody Brown LLC where the TLC money was going. I know he was cooking them books. So, and that's how I would get my land. Like, look, here's what we're going to do. You going to sign over the portions of land that I want, or I can go down there, get my account and get my attorney we crack them books open, and then we're going to take what we find to the district attorney's office. And you can explain to them about your funky little math. You go down there and math, math with them and do that two plus two is four, and you, you take the other two and bring it over here, and I'm going to keep my share, and you go with... You do that shit with the DA. See it, see how that worked for you. You know what I mean? Because I think them guys in the big house going to like them, them, them uh, luscious locks. <laughs> <laughs> Cody keep talking about his washerboard abs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Him and that dude. We ought to put lube on it. I need three more inches. Yeah, you can see three inches in the big house. <laughs> All right. Uh, Blackout 2 with the $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But yeah, man. And then what else did I want to talk about with that? There's so much. There's so much with that. Oh, Mary has said too, like she had talked about she was abandoned well before the catfish. Glad you finally admitted that shit. Like the catfish was cheating. You cheated on your relationship because you decided to stay in that relationship and you wanted to stay committed. Now, with that being said, Cody had contributed to it because he was annoying. He was ignoring her. He was the decided that he was no longer going to serve her needs and he decided to abandon her emotionally, physically, sexually, financially, and so on and so forth. He wasn't a husband with her. So when she, that just opened the door for another man to float on in there. The only difference was another man couldn't float in there because it was dude who wasn't a dude and wasn't what he said that he was. So that's why the catfish thing didn't work out. But I'm glad she finally started to admit that things wasn't coming up roses. I'm also glad, uh, well, even tied to that, I did have a note about that. I thought it was, uh, I thought that Janelle saying or sticking up for Mary is actually more relevant than anything Cody or Robin had to say, just because, well, one, Cody and Robin lie a lot. So anything they say is kind of suspect to begin with. But Janelle is somebody who doesn't like Mary. So anytime you have somebody who don't like your ass, your enemy, saying, yeah, you right, that, that shit is, what she said is true. The, Cody and her, Cody had abandoned her for years. 
I take that. I put book on that. I make book on that because Rock, Mary, Janelle has no reason to lie for Mary. Because she don't even like Mary ass. Let's keep it all the way a stack. She don't even like Mary. So she has no reason to lie for Mary. So when she said that, yeah, Cody had pretty much abandoned her and wasn't dealing with her, there's no reason in the world why I would think that that wasn't true. I had already suspected it. I, In fact, I have videos to support that very notion as I talk about marrying a catfish experience. I've said it before, and I 100% say it now. Cody had caused that to happen. Now, am I saying that, you know, if somebody cheat on you, is it your fault that you bear ownership? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, though, is that you can you can create a scenario, you can create an environment where it's more likely that that type of behavior is going to happen. Cody set up the environment because he, he started ignoring her. If she, you know, like my man said on that old song, I used to say it all the time, when you out making love, when you, uh, when you out making love, you know what I mean? Who's making love to your old lady while you was out making love? That's the song. Who's making love to your old lady while you was out making love? So while you out there screwing around with Robin and you leaving her unattended, she not, she's a healthy adult woman. I mean, she ain't going to go too long, you know, not having her needs met. Speaking of which, we're going to have to get back into this. We're going to have to get back into this. Um, <laughs> Cody, dumbass. Oh, I could be all fake with Mary. Oh, 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 I could be fake, you asshole. Like, you, who wants to hear that? Who wants to hear that? Like, oh, yeah, you know, I could pretend to love you. I don't really got to love you. I could pretend, though. No. And you're not that good of an actor. Even, even Mary said it. Like, you're not that good of an actor. I knew full well that you didn't care about me. You wasn't tricking nobody. Oh, wow. <laughs> Irish size, five three dollars super jet. She said land is full of plague infected prairie dog poo. Plague infected. You know, to be honest with you, again, this actually that kind of goes back to the whole idea that when it comes down to it, the appraisal aside, their dreams and hopes of developing this land and putting these houses up aside. They have to seriously consider what's necessary in order for them to develop this land. This land is valuable, and they can get some good money for it. And I suggest, my suggestion, and Mary, Christine, uh, well, because Christine ain't involved no more. She washed her hands of the whole foolishness and had it up. But Christine, or uh, I'm sorry, went right back to Christine. Mary, Janelle, Cody, Robin, sell Coyote Pass. Sell it. You don't have the funds to develop that land the way it needs to be developed so it will pass inspection and you can actually start renting the houses out the way Cody dreams about renting the houses out. The funny thing is, is that it's one thing for you to try to develop land that you're going to live on. It's a completely different thing for you to develop land and say that you're going to start renting that land out to somebody else. Because landlord-tenant law, you know, common law, like, look, if you rent something out to somebody and they get sick on your property, your, your liability is through the roof. Especially if it's foreseeable, it's not done properly, the, the proper things weren't done, and somebody comes there, they rent property from you, and they get sick. They'll mess around and sue you from your for your property and take your property. They will own your house. They will own Coyote Pass. So unless y'all just want to be a pass-through for whoever y'all make sick out there on Coyote Pass because you can't afford to develop it properly, just sell the damn property and go somewhere else. Besides, y'all don't get along to the point where you can pretend to live together or next to each other. So you might as well just sell it and be done with it. Um, yeah, and it, like I said, Janelle said, we need to get that land appraised. We need to start getting it looked at. I totally agree with that. Get it appraised and sell it. Just get rid of it. So that that way you can take your chunk. He can take his chunk. They can maybe pay off some of uh, Robin's house. Or at least one of the loans that they have on Robin's house. <laughs> and then just just let it be, you know. 
and let it be. Y'all all go your separate ways. <laughs> the next thing I wanted to talk about was the entire conversation. I'll, well, let me just make sure I want to get there first. Uh, one of the things that bothered me was the entire conversation about uh, how they were going to divide the land. Because that, that conversation between Mary, Robin, and Cody was basically two conversations. It was two separate conversations. Uh, big shout out to Felicia Plummer with the five dollar super chat. Cody's not in charge. Robin runs shit. She made him shut up fast about answering that question by telling him he wasn't in the space to answer it. I agree with that. Felicia Plummer, thanks for the five dollar super chat and a comment. I hundred percent agree with that. Like I think that Ro every Cody is trying to hold on to his marriage with Robin. He's trying to hold on to that marriage. And he was about to, Cody was in his frustration of being dumped and not having things go the way he wanted, was ready to spoil the game. He was ready to spoil the game. We're about to get into that. Because let's talk about the two conversations that happened. The first conversation was about the land. And like I said, they was going to do the land and they was trying to rip Mary off to her face. Because Cody was under the impression, and, and please forget the, the terminology that I'm going to use. I'm trying to figure a better way to say it. I really can't. I'm I'm frustrated, and this show is driving me crazy, so I got to say it how I feel it. At the end of the day, Cody was pretending like he was dropping the D on uh, Mary. He, he was pretending like he was knocking the socks off that chick. Okay? That's how he approached it. He approached it like he was just tan her ass up. And then there was nothing that she could do about it. She was lost in the sauce because he was throwing that love bomb on her. Bah boom, you know, he was blowing up. You know. <laughs> knocking our bottoms off. And then she just gonna go along, okay, yeah, we're gonna sell the property over there. Anything you want to do, Cody. But see, Cody just forgot that he has not given Mary her daily dose of vitamin D in about 10 to 15 years. Okay? He 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 nope. Nope. He talking to her like he tanned her to pieces. But you're not. You're not giving her that. And, he, and she's not in love with you the way you she was before. So when push comes down to shove, when you started looking at her saying, hey, yeah, girl, we're going to be doing blah, blah, blah. She just looked back at you and said, look at clown. We're not doing that. And did you see his face when she started pushing back? Then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, wait a minute. Hold, hold up now. You're, you're not agreeing. You're you're acting like you're not in love with me anymore. What's going on? <laughs> you know, and that was the problem. And, and if you notice, here's something. Here's something that I, I I picked up from it. Robin. She did the whole thing. Where when if you notice. When they had the second part of the conversation, we'll, we'll go in, in in reverse order. When they had the second part of the conversation where, where Mary was talking about she didn't want to be in a relationship no more, what did Robin do? No, no, you guys are still married. Yeah, you're still together. Oh, gosh, no, no. Right? Then she got up and walked off and cried. You know, and they, oh, but the first time I saw Robin cry for real. You know why Robin was crying? Because if you think about this show, the show and the life that she talked about she got married for. She didn't get married just for the sister wives and all that bullshit. She got married for the TV show. She got married for the TV show. And if Rob, if, if Christine and Janelle left, and Christine lives in Utah, and Janelle, she's kind of sounding like she wants to live in Utah. And then the only people who were living in Arizona at that time the meeting started was... Mary, Robin, and Cody. Mary's talking about moving. If Mary moves, who is Robin going to talk to? The only person Robin can talk to at that point is her kids. You know, and I, you know, I'm not trying to go in on, on her kids. I could, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to go in on her kids. But is she going to talk to her kids? No. she Because even in that conversation, when she was talking to her kids, she would have to say something to her kids 
other than, hey, let's have this play uh, scenario or situation where we go do dumb shit and we all pretend like we're getting along and there's no problems whatsoever. Because even in that scenario, where the hell is Dayton at? Dayton lives on the property still in the trailer out back. So where's Dayton at? Dayton must be having problems with Cody or not getting along with Cody because he's not on the show anymore, if you notice. He hasn't been on the show all season. He ain't had word one to say. He's around, but he don't have nothing to say. What happened? So you could have a whole conversation and a whole show around Dayton and uh, Cody's disagreements and why they're not getting along, but they choose not to because Robin don't want to put her kids out there like there's something going on at her house that she doesn't approve of or there's something wrong at her place because she's the perfect one. So she doesn't have anybody to talk to. Mary is the only person that she can talk to. And what does she talk to Mary about? She doesn't even talk to Mary about stuff between them. She talks to Mary about what's going on with Christine. That's not a show. So she's upset about that. She's watching her family fall apart because Christine and Janelle left. Mary's now leaving. And Mary's actually going back to Utah too. So Mary technically could be on Christine and Janelle's show. I know they're in different places in Utah, different parts of the state, but they're better situated to have a, a show than 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 Mary or uh, Robin and Cody. Yeah, who is Cody going to talk to? Cody, Cody is mad because Janelle left. Cody was talking to Janelle. Janelle was going to be Cody's outlet because if Cody doesn't have Janelle, Cody doesn't talk to Mary, then the only person Cody could talk to is Robin, and they're not going to show anything that happens between the two of them that's not approved by them that makes them look good. So that's not going to happen. She's upset because her show is disappearing. She's watching her show go. That's why she jumped her happy ass up and went, because <laughs> she's losing her show. That's why she's upset. Then you get into, uh, like when she was doing that whole thing, if you notice, while they were having that discussion about who was going to be with who and who was going to do what, she tried to tell, like, uh, like mentioned earlier, she tried to tell Cody to shut up. Because, you know, I don't need you talking right now. In my mind, this is my property and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this is what we plan on doing. Cody go to say his piece. She tell Cody, shut the hell up. Stop talking, Cody. Stop talking. Because you're about to mess things up. And at that point, uh, uh, Barry had her little bit to say. But if you notice, she had all that to say when they were talking about Mary staying, Mary going, and what was going to happen with Mary. She was interrupting everybody, but, but when they were talking about dividing the property, Robin was quiet as a damn church mouse. She didn't have shit to say. She didn't cut Cody off and tell Cody, no, no, no. We need to make sure Mary gets her fair share. No, no, no. We need to make sure that we divide the land evenly because I'm an advocate for everybody on the, and I'm on everybody's side. What she said was nothing. And the only time she started talking about what was fair and what was right was when she started talking about how they're going to divide the land and how it's not fair that she keeps getting lumped with Cody. No, chick. We don't have to, if it's 14 acres and it's four people, we don't have to divide it to the point where, you know, Cody gets, uh, you and Cody only get four acres, I get four acres, and, and, Mar and Janelle gets four acres. No, 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 that's not how you divide it. How you divide it is, you could just say, look, we just divide it into fours. So we all walk away. We get three acres and, and some change, you know, and that's and that'll be our, our uh, lot or our plot point. But Robin isn't saying that. Robin wants to keep it to the five acres because Robin wants to take all the land. And she does, she's always wanted to take all the land. You know, she's always wanted to take all the land. And that's been the, her whole plot and her whole plan. She got him out there to Arizona. I got another video. Y'all, I'm telling you, watch this video. I got a video coming out. I, I started pulling stuff. I got like four or five different uh, clips or whatever. That When she was out there on that land, and they were already divided the land up, Robin got pissed off, and she walked off and cussed Mary ass out, walked off anyway. And then when she left, and then Mary, she left, and then Robin came right back and convinced the other women 
to, to give up their land and reshuffle it so that they can decide what, who is going to get what again, and we'll do it all together again. And that's when Cody came in with the five plots of land. I'm telling you, this, this chick was bit. Robin is devious as hell. That chick is devious as hell. Oh, like Emma with the five, 999 super chat. chat, chat. <laughs> when Robin walked off, that was a, a manipulation tactic. When no one was talking, taking the bait, and chased her, she had to switch it up. <laughs> and she walked back to the table with a total different vibe. Yeah, she, you know how hard it is? That's like getting in an argument. What Robin did was the equivalent of you getting an argument with your wife. Yeah, fuck you. I'm out of here. You can kiss my entire ass. I ain't never coming back to this raggedy motherfucker no more. You run out the damn house, slam the shit out of the door, and you realize before you get to the car that you left your car keys in there on the table. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, I gotta go back in this. <sighs> All right, well, let me get this over with. You gotta open up the door. Yeah, like I said, you can kiss my ass, kiss my entire ass, go in there and get your keys and then try to leave. <laughs> but you try to you try to be super dramatic and it ain't work. And more to the point, I agree with what Emma has to say. It was a manipulation tactic, but I'll even take it a step further. It was a manipulation tactic to get them to stop talking. They were supposed to stop talking and either chase her or talk about how upset she is and try to calm her down so that they would not finish the conversation about breaking up. Because when she break up, she re she must realize that if, if Mary actually leaves and she actually gets salvation too, then she very well may realize that it's not fair that I use my money to put Robin in that big ass mansion house and I'm going to give her four acres of land here. Here's the deal, Robin. If you want more land here, then you have to give me my money back. If I'm going to come in and you're going to give me Yo, two acres, then you got to give me my money back. I need a refund is what I need. I need a refund in my life. So, Because I paid for your house, and then you're going to sit there and say, but you only bought a little bit of land, about two acres of land here on Coyote Pass. Yeah, bitch, but I paid for your house, that million-dollar house. So I want my equity about that house. Are we doing that? Is that what we're doing? Because what you don't want to have, and this is what I was saying before, what you don't want to have happen, you don't want an accountant to come in there and start going through those books. You don't want somebody to come in and audit your books. Because if they audit the books, somebody ass is going to jail. Somebody going to jail. And here's the secret to the sauce, Cody. Miss, I don't know nothing. I ain't involved with nothing. She going to tell you, Cody, you going to jail. I'm not saying she ain't going to go. It ain't a possibility she won't go. But I'm damn certain that she's going to try to throw your ass up under the bus, Septa Man. She's trying to throw you under the bus, New Jersey Transit. MTA or whatever you want to call it. Whatever bus route is running through your town. She is, you can call Robin the bus driver. She's going to put you on the magic bus. I'm telling you, it's going to be ugly. Blue Heavenly Le Leonard <laughs> with the 499 Super Chat. Robin has nerve saying she was entitled to a piece of land. What is she paying it for? Paying for it with <laughs> going on her knees. Ooh, you said that. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, a pause. <laughs> a phrasing. <laughs> exact, but that's a good point though. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, what are you talking about? I deserve to have land. This is my estate for my kids. Hold up, bitch. What are you talking about? What about my kids? And it doesn't matter. When you start talking about estates, we're talking about what you earn. Not just because you married into the family you put up with this dumbass. You don't get paid for that. You signed up for that. What have you contributed to the family? What have you paid for? Where do you work other than, you know, sharpening this jackass's pencil? What are you talking about? You don't get it. You don't know. I ain't giving you no credit for that. Like, especially if she's trying to get in it, too. <laughs> like, like, Mary, like, I'm trying to get in it, too. So you didn't have to take all the burden on yourself. I was trying to get broke off, too. That's what Mary trying to tell her. I was trying to get mine, too. <laughs> so, so if you sit up and say, I was, I was satisfying all his needs, you ain't have to satisfy his needs. I was trying to tag in. I was trying to get in, too. <laughs> but you were selfish. You wasn't tagging me in. So, no, you don't get credit for that. And like I said, crack them books open. I guarantee you that they all of a sudden they become reasonable. Amy G with the five dollar super chat. 
We're all just here watching along enough to see Cody and Robin and Paper <laughs> at serving fries. <laughs> that would be a hell of a spinoff. May I take your order, please? <laughs> fries with that? Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with working in fast food, though, baby. I'll be there ordering fast food. Shit, I appreciate them people. They be doing a good job for me. Cody and Robin get a job. A jobbing. <laughs> Extra salt with that. <laughs> yeah, because they are salty. And you can see it in Cody's face. He's mad as hell. But like I said, when, when they were talking about when they were talking about that property, you ain't see Robin. Yo, she wasn't bucking up. She was the only time Robin started coming back was when Mary was talking about dividing that property further. Oh no, this, this four acres are for my kids. Whoa, 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 whoa. You get four acres. That don't mean Cody get four acres. Because at the end of the day, you would get four acres regardless. And you're saying that you get four acres plus Cody gets four acres in case you guys' marriage don't work out. Hint, hint, Cody. She letting you know where it is. Cody looking all sad, looking down. He's, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. You should be scared. You should be running. You should be scared. You should be horrified. Because she ain't joking. Oh, I was just joking, Cody. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> like my man say, I'm just joking. I'm just playing. Unless you're going to do it. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Unless you're going to do it. Shit. <laughs> she let you know where it is. And it is much money as they put in? No, no, no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. And we, what about my estate? Oh, because I only got one kid. I only get two acres of land. Well, how about I paid for 95% of this? So how about that? Like, forget all of them. Who got what kid? You know? Oh, I got 18 kids. That don't mean nothing to me. You got 18 kids. I got to make sure I take care of mine. So where's mine at? That's where Mary should have came at. That's where Mary should have came at uh, both of them with. What about me? Forget that. Like I said. <laughs> they said Robin ain't cute enough for another man. <laughs> Lisa Rose 18. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but I get it. I get why she's fighting as hard as she is because, you know, if she living that. The crazy part is, is that Robin has bought into the bullshit that Cody is, is talking now, that Manosphere stuff. And the basis of those relationships is transactional. And because Robin is where Robin is and she, you know, it's kind of like, like when, uh, you have, you have, I have a daughter, you talk to your daughter, you tell her that you want to invest in yourself. You want to develop a personality. You want to be yourself. You want to have your mind right. So on and so forth. Because even though you're a very attractive girl, you're a pretty girl. One day you're not going to be a pretty girl, <laughs> not a, not a pretty girl, but you're going to be a beautiful woman. And then, you know, as time goes on, you know, time is time and time is a cruel mistress. You know, and so if the only thing you have to offer is I'm tw 10 years or 20 years younger than the OG three, if that's all you have to offer, one day you won't be able to offer that to your next man. And that's where Robin is. So I understand why she's fighting as hard as she is. But at the same time, the OG three don't have to let up off that gas, mash that gas and hit her in the ass. Forget that. Like, you don't have to bow down to her because she's in a bad situation. You did this to yourself. Michelle Clark with the $10 Super Chat. Okay. So, James, you reached 1000 on a live. Oh, am I? Thank you for letting me know. I had no clue. My 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 thing don't tell me nothing. <laughs> I just see who's in the, uh, the chat boxes. But thank you for everybody who's coming in. Salute. We gonna keep this show rolling, cause like I said, man, there's a bunch of crazy shit I was watching on this. I'll pardon my French. I'm just, oh, I'm speaking that French tonight. Ooh, ooh, I'm about to brush my teeth extra good tonight, Jack, cause, <laughs> cause I'm gonna be talking mad shit. <laughs> this is gonna be wild. Like, what is it? Uh, yeah, they kept pushing the division of the property. This is how we're gonna divide the property up. Somehow Robin's walking away with all this property and they keep ignoring the fact that they talk about like, oh, well, when I get divorced, you know, we separate them, you know, just like Christine and Co you're not like Christine and Janelle. Stop that shit. You are legally married. So when you get a divorce, a divorce attorney and a judge is going to tell you what your property lines look like. Your, 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 you're going to tell a judge is going to go in there and be like, 
You get the house. You get the car. You gonna have to sell this. You gonna have to sell that. You gonna have to give up the money. And it, you, know, you understand what I mean? Like you're, you, she's sitting there pretending like she doesn't have protection, and that shit annoys the hell out of me. You're not in the same situation. You're not in the same position. You never were. Mary was. I guess Mary, you know, back in the day when they first met her and they first started dealing with her, they, they were saying it, and I'd heard too. How about this? I had said a while ago in one of my previous videos, at a doom, thank you so much for the 499 super chat. Thanks for breaking this down with your amazing insight. Thank you for coming and, and hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Otherwise, I'd just be going crazy saying this shit by myself in my kitchen. Okay. I appreciate all y'all hanging out with me so I don't feel like I'm the crazy one. But I said a while ago on one of my videos that Robin had known Cody, had met Cody, and was dealing with Cody. It came out not too long ago. I just saw a video the other day. Somebody had said that uh, Mary had started to confess that Robin and Cody had known each other before, and they were actually having an affair. And they didn't want the other wives to know. And that story started trickling out. So that might be what they're going to drop on this tell-all next week. That's why I'm kind of curious if TLC is actually done with Robin and Cody. Because if they're done with them, then they're going to start telling the truth. They're going to start pulling tapes. And it's going to get way wilder. Like, this this has the potential. And I hope they do. Because they, cause if they don't, if they try to solve... And this is James's prediction of production. James's prediction of production. I like how that sounds. If TLC doesn't start challenging these two and they keep letting these two de decide what the direction of the show is going to be, this show will end maybe in one season, one and a half seasons, they will cancel this show because this show is going to be the same old bullshit just kind of rehashed. What they need to do is you need to start thinking like Producers start thinking about this show like people who are producing a reality TV show and you start letting people be who they are instead of having them trying to create characters for us to consume. Because here's a hint. People are not being fooled by the bullshit characters Robin and Cody are trying to create for themselves. I don't think Cody is a nice guy. I don't think Cody is misunderstood. I think... Cody is coming off to me like an asshole, okay? And, and I know a lot of people blame Robin for a lot of what's going on, but I say Robin is to blame for a lot of the manipulation and a lot of the tactics, a lot of the bomb throwing that happens within this family. I'm not discounting that, but I'm going to say this. Cody is 100% responsible for the breakdown of this family. He could, Robin couldn't do none of this shit without Cody's permission. And his saying so. If he didn't go along with it, then Robin is powerless. Robin has the power of influence. She has the power of influence over Cody. Cody is a decider. Robin has power of influence over him. If he ever got tired of Robin, if he ever said, you know what, we're not doing that shit. No, no, shut up, dummy. We're not doing that. Then Robin has no power. What is she going to do? Take her money and go home? Robin don't have no money. Robin doesn't have any income. Mary can hurt them by leaving. Because she's bringing money into the family. She's still paying for shit. She's still paying for that house that they got. That's why Cody's out there selling all his crap off. Because Mary was kicking in money. Janelle is kicking in money. So when Janelle talks about leaving, no, we don't want Janelle to be in Oklahoma. <laughs> Janelle, come back. Christine was kicking in money. Oh, Christine, Christine. Robin ain't kicking in money. What Robin is doing for Cody is not monetary. Just saying. So we got to keep it all the way as that. And Robin is not manipulating. Like she's, she tries to be manipulative. Oh, we're going to tell him. We not, don't talk about what you plan on doing, Cody, or where you at. Keep that a secret until I can, I can run it through my little data bank and come up with a better way to communicate it. Bump you, lady. You don't get to, you don't know. Let Cody say what he going to say. Cody be a grown ass man, doc. Take your balls out your wife's purse. And say what you got to say. Say it with your chest. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying not to, I'm really trying not to be too crazy on this thing. But say it with your chest. Be a man. If you want to be an adult, like, forget all the man, woman, crap. Be an adult. Be an adult. You're in this relationship. You're deciding what you want to do with yourself. You feel a certain way. Freaking say it. 
You're party to this relationship. Say what you feel. Say what you feel. Let me deal with you where you are. And that's me. I want to I don't want to deal with people go home and try to figure out where you are, what's the best way to say stuff and how can I try to manipulate you into doing what I want you to do? No, give me you. Give me the real you. Give it all to me. If we have a disagreement, let me know where you at. Because I can respect that. What I don't respect is you trying to manipulate me because you feel a certain way and you're going to go home and try to shape the way you feel so that you can take advantage of me later on down the line. No, tell me what you plan on doing with your land, Cody. What's your plans? See, Robin ain't want him to say nothing because she knew what Cody was going to mess around and tell the truth. We're going to take the land from y'all. We're going to buy y'all out. That's why I've been stalling y'all out. Oh, we can't build nothing on the land till everything's paid off. That's bullshit. You can build on the land. You just can't do nothing with the property lines. You can't redivide it. No, but you can build on it. They'll absolutely let you build on it. That's why he sold it to you so you could build on it, dummy. Something tell me that you can't build on land unless it's paid off. Get the hell out of here. What's wrong with you? You think I'm stupid too? And this is the whole point. Like, TLC, stop letting these people t run your show. Because it, it's insulting. Like, I, I'm not insulted at the fact you're going to lie to me. I'm insulted at the fact that you're going to tell such a dumbass lie and expect me to believe it. How about that? Are you serious? Like, I, I don't know. I'm getting mad now. Like, it's, <laughs> this show have you fired up, Jack. This shit, it's good for your health, though. Because it gets you high, you come down, you know, <laughs> help regulate your blood pressure. Just can't take it personal. You know. But this, this is the crazy part. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh man. Two points. Oh, oh. Cause I wrote some stuff down, man. I was like, I was just jotting down little notes and stuff. Cause I was watching it and I was so fired up. I was like, what the, are you? Oh, oh, hell no, hell to the, one more time. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was watching that. Oh, oh man. I'm telling you, this stuff is crazy. But one thing that got me jacked up, one thing that got me jacked up, Cody. When Cody looked her in the face and said, we had a sacred covenant. Dude, if I didn't love you, I would let you go. Because you didn't want to be pathetic. That pathetic place, that sacred covenant, that you would be pathetic. Who pathetic? Because there's two things with that. First thing, Cody didn't just say that to Robin because like, oh, I'm trying to tell you where I am with Mary because according to him, him and Mary's been in this pathetic ass place for years. So obviously he has no problem with, you know, put, be, being an actor and pretending and keeping her in this pathetic place. What he was doing was he was saying to Robin, remember when we had talked when we first got together and I told you how shitty my relationship was with Mary and you said to me that I don't want to be in a pathetic ass place like that chick Mary. Remember when you said that to me? That's what he was talking about. That's what he was saying. Remember when you said that to me, Robin, and we were sitting around, basically when we were sitting around shit talking Mary behind her back and you was laughing and giggling at her, treating her like a fucking clown. Remember when you said that? That's why Robin, uh-oh, uh-oh. That's why she got the, <laughs> that's why she got that, this, the, the dummy stymie face. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> see, I wish, see, do you ever have that scenario? And I, I, I know I can't be the only one. You ever had a scenario where you wish you could just jump in somebody's body at that time? Like you wish you could take them over so you can sit there. I wish I could have jumped right into Mary and I'd look Robin right in the face like, hold up, Cody. You tell me. Tell me how pathetic I am. No, 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 no. Don't start stuttering now. Don't stutter now, motherfucker. Tell me what you were saying before. Tell me how you felt about me before when you were sitting there talking shit about me to him. Tell me what you said. Tell how you didn't want to be pathetic. What was that? Pathetic? That's what you said? <laughs> Cause she let you know, and that, and again, I went back, 
And I thought about it because I knew this this was coming. And when I thought about it, like thinking about this, over the 18 seasons that we watched, how many times has Mary come out and started snapping on Robin? Like snapped on Robin, cussed Robin out, said something rough or wrong to Robin. Robin has had at least three instances where she's come out and told Mary to shut the fuck up and walk off. That one time when they were on the land and they went out there and Cody had subdivided the land to the, the wives or whatever. And Robin didn't like it because she didn't want the land divided. And she said, I got the last other thing. And it's not fair. And Cody told me I got to have whatever. And I'm just mad because I don't want what I want. And then Mary tried to tell her like, well, look, Cody told me the same thing. And he gave me a little piece of land and he said that I'm going to have whatever's left or whatever. And Robin said, look, can I finish? And she said, oh, go ahead. And then Robin ran through her little story about what she had to say. And then she went to go, well, now I'm going to leave because I got to go find a house to rent, whatever. And Mary said to Robin, well, now that I let you finish, can I say my part? And Robin looked in her, kept walking. She didn't even look in her face. She kept walking. was like, no, not right now. Kept stepping. That was the first time. There was another time where they were sitting around talking and Robin snapped out on Mary. Mary Robin always snapped on Mary. When when they were sitting there talking, when when uh, Robin was asking, Mary was asking for the house for the Padawan place, the uh, Lizzie's Inn. Robin sat there and cut her down talking about, yeah, well, Cody ain't giving you no money. We ain't trying to give you no money. Because as soon as Mary started talking about it's going to be my house, and I'm not going to share the proceeds with you guys. I'm not giving the house to the family. Then all of a sudden, is we need to cut this off. Robin was like, we're not going to give up none of my resources to this house. Because everything that they had was her shit. It was her money. When she started talking about the property and lending the money out and who was going to get what and whether they were going to get the money to marry for this Lizzie's Inn or whatever. And, and Mary was talking about keeping Lizzie's Inn to herself. Then all of a sudden, it was Robin's money. You're not lending out my money. And she started talking shit to Mary then. And every time this woman started talking crap to Mary, Mary would sit there and bow down and apologize and smile and kiki and oh, 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 you know, and she would say, she'd sit there and say wild shit to Mary. When she was sitting there on uh, season 16 or season 17, when she was sitting at, uh, Mary, she came, Mary came over to Robin's house and they had, was sitting outside on the porch because she don't even let her in the house. She don't even let her in the house like she a dog or something. She, they sat outside and they were talking about how Christine couldn't leave unless uh, she had permission from the church. And then during that conversation, she was like, I don't even care. We moved to Coyote Pass and she have another man and she just stayed with the family. Just keep shooting those shows. <laughs> and Mary looked in her face and said, well, I'm not ready for that. And Robin had snapped right back at her, you know, because she was supposed to be crying at the time, but you know, I don't care if she moves on to the property with another man. She could do that. It's fine. And and Robin and Mary said, well, I'm not ready for that. The tears dry right up. Or I should say the, the bullshit crying that she was doing. Dry right up. Stone face. She looked Mary in the face and said, well, I had to get used to it because of you. And talking about the catfish stuff. And then Mary had to sit there. Oh, 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 oh. The whole time she'd been treating her like that. And then you're going to come out your mouth. It's one thing for me to be thinking that you might be talking shit about me or you might be my friend and things just ain't working out. Like if I'm married, things ain't working out between me and Cody, but you're my friend and you might be just a little off putting. It's another thing to realize that this chick's been talking shit about you the entire time and laughing at you behind your back. And she should have let that chick have it. Rochelle J with the five dollars super chat. Rochelle J in the house. There's a reason why I've dubbed Mary <laughs> Mathetic. <laughs> Same as you calling <laughs> the whole pencil box. <laughs> Can everyone please hit that like for James? Thank you, Rochelle. Jay, I appreciate you. I got to hit you up too. I'm going to hit you up. Check your email. But, um, yeah, the, uh, the, this whole thing, I'm telling you, it's stupid. It's stupid. Like, you don't get to talk shit about me behind my back and then had this joker throw it in my face that you've been talking shit about me because that's why he did it. Now, there's another reason as to why I think Cody let Robin know at that moment what was going on. Because ultimately, I think Cody still is a little nervous that Mary and Robin <laughs> might actually become closer friends like Janelle and Christine did 
after they break up. And then that's just somebody he's going to have to deal with. And then he's afraid that Mary might actually pull Robin away because he feels Robin slipping. Like the money is starting to get a little shaky. The show future is starting to get a little shaky and he can feel that relationship starting to become a little unstable. So I think that he's trying to prevent Mary from growing a close bond between her and Robin. Now, when we talk about uh, Cody telling Mary, and this, again, this is another jackass move from Cody. Cody telling Mary that he doesn't necessarily want her out there telling people that they broke up. How ignorant is that? Of course Cody is cool with it. Of course he's cool with it because, see, Cody, if Cody is lying to the public and lying to TLC, lying to the audience, and telling everybody that me and Mary are still together, knowing full well he don't even go over there and talk to Mary at all, he don't never see her. Right, so everything is cool. He still got his, his what do you call it, a hunt, his bun. He still got his honey bun at the house. He's still getting his all, right? But the whole time, Mary can't do the same thing because Mary can't get caught out in the street by the paparazzi, by fans, by pe rando people just walking down the street taking a picture, right? If she go out on a date, she has to explain to her prospective date, maybe boyfriend or guy she's seeing that, yeah, I'm not really married to Cody. That's just the character I'm playing on TV. And she runs the risk of that coming out and TLC suing the hell out of her. So she had to be alone. It's not just the thing of like, oh, well, if I keep saying this, I got to keep pretending and I got to be alone. You have to be alone because not only do you have to say that you're with Cody, but you have to act like you're with Cody. Which means that you can't go out on dates, you can't see people, you can't date people, you can't put on your date nap that you single and you looking for some fun, you you single ready to mingle, you can't do none of that. Because it's too much of a risk. And Cody can always hit you with that. So, so I mean, it's a lot of, lot of disingenuous stuff that goes on with this. Like, like I said, the whole thing got me stuttered. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like I say, that whole there, you're pathetic and all that stuff. And when I first got with you and before we got married, that was before season one, Mary. So for at least 16, 17 years, they've been playing you. You've been getting played for 17 damn years. So yeah, we're going to be talking to somebody. Yeah, Luana Williams. Robin probably already selling those art pieces and stashing money in a secret account. She could get rid of a lot of stuff before anybody would be able to notice. And here's what's even crazier. They were saying the same thing. Um, I think it was Crystal Ball. She did an interview with uh, her ex-husband, Robin's ex-husband's family. And they were saying the same thing when she was married to her ex-husband. That... When she had, like, she would go out, go shopping, because they were saying that she had a shopping addiction. She would go out, go shopping, she would buy the stuff, and then she would put it in the shed out back, and then slowly start to incorporate it in the house so the husband wouldn't recognize that he was buying all this stuff. He was truly, from what I understand, he was truly surprised that they had that much debt. Like, they paid the debt off, and then he was trying to save money to buy a house and then turn around. She had ran up his credit cards all crazy. He paid the credit cards off, Borrowed money from his family to, uh, he paid the credit cards off. Then she ran up some more debt. He paid, borrowed money from his family to pay those credit cards off, that debt off. And then they turned around and she ran, took that money and ran it up. So she's been hiding money. Like she has a history of this shit. And this is why I say, like, when you deal with people, it's important that you recognize the patterns that people have in their behavior. So and you figure out from there whether this is somebody you want to deal with, Cody. This is something that you should have looked at. Instead of looking at, you know, fantasizing about her denim jean model of diesel jeans. You know, what she could do about that. You know, you should have been looking at the fact that this is the person that I'm talking about dating. This is the, this is the woman I plan on bringing around my family. You know, okay, fine. Like, the less get you and you, there's somebody you knocking off and you having a good time. You getting a little strange. A little, you know, a little uh, freak in the sheets. Okay. Wrong. But, okay. But this is somebody you talking about bringing to your family. Around your kids. And she ripping her ex-husband off. You're nuts. Crazy people, man. Crazy people. Oh, let me turn all this off before this rings again. 
But make sure you guys hit that like button, man. <laughs> Please hit the like button. Let a brother know. Let him know. We having fun. Oh, yeah, no, the whole thing where he was talking about faking being a husband. He wasn't faking being a husband for Mary's sake because he was telling Mary what it was. Like, because he wasn't faking with her. He was telling her, well, he was kind of telling her one thing. Then he tell her he didn't really want to be with her. But he wouldn't come at her the same way he would on the confessionals. That kind of came out, too. But he was, t he was being more honest with Mary than he was with Robin about Mary. And the reason why he was talking about faking, he wasn't faking for Mary. He was faking for Robin. He was faking so that Robin feels comfortable because what did he say on the Mormon Live thing? When you good to your wives, then other people see how good you are to your wives and you become more attractive to them. That's what he was talking about was his relationship with Robin. He was sitting there talking about how he was doing, like I said, he was talking about how he was doing all this stuff for his wives. Oh, I got one wife. You know, she work a job, but, you know, we take care of her as a family because that's what we do as polygamists. So you come into the family, you got built-in babysitters, so you know. I got another wife. She work, but she don't really make a lot of money. Her name is Mary. Yeah, I'm legally married to her, but we don't really have a good relationship. We probably don't even have sex. How many guys who cheat on their wives, real talk, how many guys cheat on their wives or wives cheat on their husbands and they supposedly aren't sleeping with the husband or a wife or they aren't satisfied with the sexual activity between the husband and the wife. They ain't getting theirs proper. Every dude who cheat and every woman who cheat is not satisfied with their husband or wife sexually. That's the, that's the, one of the main lines that they always, we ain't never doing nothing. We just basically roommates. And he said the same thing about Mary Miss pathetic relationship. That's what he said. But he got, uh, oh, we basically roommates, me and Mary, we barely get along. And then, of course, I got Christine. I'm taking full care of her. Like, she don't have to work. She don't have to do nothing. She just watch the kids because that's what she like doing. So if you come into my family, wow, this is so amazing. I won't have to work or nothing. And then she comes into the family. And that's how he got her. So when he's sitting there saying that I can pretend to be a husband, I can pretend to keep being a husband to Mary, he was already doing that for Robin. He was doing it for Robin, not for Mary. He was doing it for Robin so he could stay with Robin. But again, he feels himself on that shaky ground with Robin because he doesn't realize, and this is the messed up part about it. He thinks that if he can keep Mary or keep a wife or whatever, that situation, a polygamy situation, Robin is more likely to stay. That ain't got nothing to do with it, Hus. The money. You have to figure a way to keep the money. If you can keep the money, and you couldn't lose the money that you have coming in, and, or more to the point, you keep the money that you have coming in, and she can't get to it, there's no way she can get that money or seize that money, divorce you and take that money, then she'll stay with you. But if she figures a way to be able to get that money without you, you go. You go, sucker. So, so that's the one thing. Um... Uh, let's see. I'm trying to talk to Yeah, the one thing that really annoyed the hell out of me. Oh, oh, oh. Before I get into that. The relationships won't change. Well, Christine, Christine did work at night, but I don't think he was telling Robin that. Let's keep it real. Like, I don't think that, I don't think Cody was telling, when he was dating Robin, I'm talking about the conversation he was having with Robin to get her in the family when he was talking to Robin and court Robin He wasn't telling Robin. Yeah, I got a wife who babysits kids all day and she works at night Because <laughs> that's not a check. Robin's like I ain't trying to work at night <laughs> I ain't trying to work nowhere <laughs> So you got to tell us something that makes a, the uh, the the thing seem more attractive to Robin the lies got to be more attractive to Robin so if he says that he has a pathetic relationship like for instance the guys who cheat on their on their wives right and they say that me and my wife don't have a good relationship we don't have a, a sexual relationship we haven't seen eye to eye for years then the whole purpose of you saying that like he <laughs> He could be like, oh, me and my wife don't have any sex. We haven't had sex or nothing for like 15 years. And that meanwhile, they got a three-year-old at home. They got had a newborn. Like, <laughs> clearly you've been doing something. 
right? So you you have to tell a lie that diminishes your current relationship, but at the same time makes you look like a decent person to give the excuse or the uh, the justification as to why this person can get involved with you. So I don't think that when yes, Christine did work. Yes. She had, was responsible for all these kids. And yes, she was doing a lot of stuff. She was contributing to her family. Mary was contributing to the family financially. Janelle was co contributing to the family financially. But I don't think Robin heard any of that. What Robin heard was Cody was taking care of all three of these women. And they were working, but they were paying for their own stuff. Is what I think Rob, Cody was telling them. Um, with regard to that... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they said that the relationship won't change, promise the relationship will be the same. It'll stay the same. They're talking about the relationship for the TV because the only time Robin is really interested in seeing Mary is when the TV camera's around. Because if you listen to Mary talk about it, the only time that they came around or the only time she was invited to shit was when the cameras were there and they were filming. Other than that, Mary wasn't invited to nothing. Mary was sitting in the thing. The crazy part is, like so many things, if... Robin was interested in having these relationships with the sister wives. You could have picked up the phone and called the sister wife and you should have had that relationship already. It shouldn't have take, taken a breakup for you to figure out that you want to have these people around. You don't wait till they're gone to decide that all of a sudden you want to try to work shit out. When they saying, okay, well, I got to move on because I'm not getting what I need out of the relationship. Well, we need to talk. Like, no, the time for talk is over. We need to keep it pushing. But um, there was something else I wanted to say about that. I forget what it was. Let me see. I'm trying to talk to everyone. Oh, yeah. That's what I wanted to talk about. When Robin was sitting there trying to talk for everybody, she tried to talk for Cody. Then she tried to talk for Mary. Mary had to tell her to shut the hell up. Let me say what I'm going to say because I know what I want to say. I, I, I figured it out already. I've already thought about it. Thank you. I don't need a mouthpiece. When people try to talk for you, it's not because they're trying to translate for you. And this, this is, a, again, a manipulation tool that Robin uses. They're not trying to say it in a way where they're, they're able to communicate your ideas better. What they're doing is they're limiting thought. They're limiting ideas. They're limiting the conversation. When, when Robin was sitting there talking about, oh, well, I need to tell everybody what I want to, let me do the talking. Let me say things the way I want to say things because I don't want nobody's feelings to get hurt. What she's saying is I'm not going to talk about the sensitive parts of this conversation, the parts of the conversation that needs to be said, the part of the conversation that needs to be had. We're not going to talk about any of that. We're going to talk about a bunch of fluff shit. And then we're going to walk away from this conversation with nothing solved, nothing decided, nothing is going to happen in this conversation. And the problem with this family, and this goes back even when Christine and Janelle were a part of the family. The reason why, a big reason as to why this family fails is because they never sat down and fully had those difficult conversations. Because those difficult conversations, they're hard, they're scary. And yes, it might come to a point where somebody decides, I don't want to be a part of this situation anymore. So instead of them having that difficult conversation and facing that fear, they take the coward's way out and avoid the conversation. And by Mary or Robin trying to control the conversation, she's preventing them from actually having a the conversation they need to have. And it also gives a point in a position where Robin gets the later claim that she had no idea. Because if they have the conversation in front of her, it gives her very little cover for her to come back and say, I had no idea this was going on. I didn't know nothing about it. It's a complete surprise to me. And she loses that whole effect. So no, she doesn't want to have a real conversation with herself sitting there. And she certainly doesn't want to have it on the screen. Why? Because again, if Mary leaves, the show is over as far as uh, uh, Cody and Robin are concerned. The show is over. They don't have a show like that. Who's watching a Cody Brown Robin show? Nobody's watching that show. It's a stupid show. Like, I don't, I, 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 I feel bad watching. Like, I mean, I'm, I don't want to be a dick. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm, I say this all the time. Like, I feel bad even saying it. I don't want to be a dick. 
But I'm not, I don't want to watch Robin's kids. Because I feel bad watching her kids. And I feel bad about it. You know what I mean? Can I be the first person online to say that? Like, I feel, I genuinely feel bad watching her kids on TV. I don't feel right about it. Now, people will say, like, oh, they're adults. And I, I get that. I get that they're adults, too. You know, they're the same ages. Like, they're right around the same ages as Gabe, Garrison, and all them, like, uh, Gwendolyn. But I feel more comfortable talking about them. Because they, they seem like they're a little more screwed into reality. Like, Robin's kids, they don't seem like they screwed into reality. They seem like they're so sheltered that they've actually been hobbled in a lot of ways. That they're not really ready for uh, any real hard looks at them. Right? And, and then you're putting your kids into a situation. And I mean this. Like, for Robin, if you ever see this or you ever hear about this, don't do this to your children. Don't do this because if you put them on a TV show and YouTube channels watch your show and your kids are on that show, you're opening your kids to be criticized and actually talked about. You're putting them out there where, where some people like, I have a good amount of restraint. I think I have a good amount of restraint. Let me know if I do. Some of you are probably like, this, what are you talking about? <laughs> you ain't holding shit back, James. You, <laughs> you talking mad shit about these kids. Okay, maybe I am, but I'm not trying to be mean. There are some channels that will be mean and will be ruthless to these kids. And your kids are not ready for it. And that's for me. Like, that's that's my kind of my line. Like, I, I kind of go after people I think can handle it. I'm not trying to go after people who I don't think can handle it. I don't think Robin's kids can handle it. Do I think they're manipulative? Yeah. I think they get a lot of traces and a lot of uh, traits from their mom. And I think that they got that in them. I'm not disputing that. I'm not disputing that at all. But I just don't feel comfortable going after them because I don't think that they screwed in right. Right? And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to diss them. But there are people who will go after your kids. So if you pull them onto a show and you got you and the Cody Brown and the Robin Brown show and you pull your kids into it and they have their thing and then you're there trying to yell and they're creating drama on the show and people are going after them, they're coming after your kids and they can't handle it. Like don't put them in situations they can't handle it. Handle. So that's just my two. So, but other than that, I, I don't want to watch the Cody Brown and Robin Love story and them two sitting around trying to feel sorry for themselves. I have no interest in watching that shit. None, because I, I don't think either one of them are sympathetic characters. And it's hard to watch a show that you don't give a shit about anybody on the show. Like there, there are shows like one of the more powerful, like even villains. There are villains who have a bigger. <laughs> <laughs> they have a bigger fan base than some of the heroes. You know, Darth Vader, Star Wars, a bigger fan base than the good guys who face them. <laughs> you know, you, you uh, the earmark of a true villain is that you can put that villain against anybody. <laughs> it doesn't matter who's in the position. Like uh, the Christmas Carol, right? The John Dickens story, you know, coming up on Christmas. The three ghosts, you know, past, present, and future. Like those three ghosts. You can, it doesn't matter who plays the Scrooge in that story. Like I've seen many, you know, iterations of that story. The villains are the most interesting people in the story because you can put them in any story and anybody can play the good guy in that story. The villains are interesting. In this case, Robin and Cody are not interesting enough to be able to carry a show. Sorry, TLC. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Unless you put somebody else on a show who they can victimize. And to be honest with you, I don't want to watch them victimize Robin's kids. I don't want to watch that shit. I just don't. <laughs> it's bad enough. And I and I think that it's offset with, you know, well, James, you watched them victimize uh, Janelle and Christine and, and uh, Mary's children. Yeah, but these children also had a support system in place. The Mary and Janelle and, and Christine, whether you like them, love them, hate them, whatever the case may be, they were good moms. They took care of their kids. They looked out for their kids. Yeah, they had Mary, like she had a dispute with her child, and I get that, but she looked out for her as best she could. And so they always had, like, there was always, like, kind of a, a justification there where you could say, okay, yeah, Cody's a shitty father, but they have really good moms. If both parents are bad, it's too much. It's too damn much. Amy V with the uh, 699 Super Chat. Too much. Thank you. <laughs> Laughter. 
so important, especially when talking about such stressful topics, seeing people being treated in such a disgusting way. Thank you so much, Amy. And I agree. I 100% agree. Like, it's just, it's insane how bad they treat these folks. And I, I don't want to watch it a, like a crazy abusive show. Like, you know, I guess I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Raspberry with the final super chat. To the window, to the wall. Robert give back Kobe's, Cody's balls. <laughs> to the window, to the wall. <laughs> give, Robert give back Cody's balls. <laughs> Make all this money fall. Because she'd be like, skeet, 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 skeet. <laughs> Get that money thrown on her. <laughs> I'm sure that's like a fantasy she has. She won't be like uh, Scrooge McDuck and just dive into a money well and swim around. And that uh, maybe in that, that coyote poop pool. You know what I mean? The coyote poop pool. She want to put some money in there and just swim in it. <laughs> this is all Cody's money. <laughs> Unfortunately, they call Cody Papa Nichols. <laughs> Cause my man gonna be in trouble. Like I said, they ever get the damn uh, auditors up in there? Cody gonna be in. Woo. He gonna lose what's left of them golden locks. Cody shit gonna start back here. <laughs> he gonna be in trouble. <laughs> he gonna rub a ball spot just sitting there worried about. It. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, oh, that man want me to bring the books in on Monday. <laughs> what do you think's gonna happen? I'm going to jail. <laughs> Michelle J with the five dollar super chat. There is a reason why I've dubbed Mary Mathetic <laughs> saying you calling the whole whole pencil box. I'm giving you the old super chat, but I love it. <laughs> so I had to read it. So nice, I had to read it twice. <laughs> I'm telling you, but yeah, you gotta watch them. They, this whole episode, man, I'm telling you, it's a shit show. Like, it's just it was crazy as hell. It was crazy as hell. Yeah, and that, that whole thing, sitting there smiling and grinning. Like, I couldn't take that. Like, I don't know how these people do it. <laughs> Humble Hill Horse says she's too shy to know what balls are, though. No, she knows. Trust me. Trust me when I say this. Robin know her way. Robin's a, a damn cocksmith. Like, she 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 know what she's doing. She ain't playing. <laughs> like, don't get it twisted. Robin's been in the world. Okay, like I know, I know a lot of us sit there and, and look down on her skills. Like I'm not saying she's the most skillful person who ever applied the, the craft. But you, how, you know, how much skill you got to bring to, to to somebody who, who hasn't been around a whole lot themselves. Like Cody hasn't been, really been around. He just had two wives. Like it sounds kind of pimptastic, but the reality of it is Cody, you know, in a, in a community that they have, they're not running around doing a whole bunch of wild stuff. Although, and here's a, sorry for the, for the dirty fact, but years ago I heard that the, uh, like, cause they were talking about Utah and they were saying, <laughs> they were saying that they were going to ban, uh, was it a, a pornographic sites off of Utah or something? This is years ago, a little bit of politics, but they said they're going to ban it. Uh, cause they were talking about social media. <laughs> and it came out like Utah was like the number one site. <laughs> they the number one users for like uh, adult sites. <laughs> so, so maybe they're not doing a whole lot, but they might know a lot more than you give them credit for. So I won't even play them off like they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> well, you know, you got to watch the Utahians apparently because they freaks in, you know. Them, them uh, undercover freaks. You might go to the house and be like, what's down here in the basement? Don't go in that basement. You open that door and be like, whoa, freak stuff swings. and, and <laughs> <laughs> What is that? Don't touch that. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, might, you go in their basement, you might have to come out and get a shot. <laughs> you might have to go see a doctor. <laughs> Oh, man. They were like, hey, you would have been better off going to one of the Mormon basements. Uh, not Mormon basements. Utah people basements. You'd probably be better off going into the, like a football stadium and just putting your finger right on the urinal cake. <laughs> It'd be safer. Or taking a swim down there in Coyote Pass in that pool. How about that? 
You know what I mean? I can't believe that shit. That's so disgusting. <laughs> and when I saw, and they were swimming, they were like, I was like, please don't nobody put their face in there. Because if somebody got out of there, their head would have been wet out of, out of threw up. <laughs> I would have been done. I would have been done. Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading some of these super chats. Or not super chats, but some of the chat box. DB, Cody Brook, Robin into the grift. The TLC money and everything. Yes. I think that ultimately Cody brought Robin into the uh, into the fold because of the TLC money. She's there for the TLC money. She's there for the fame. She's there for the TV cameras. And then once the TV cameras leave, there's no reason why she should stay with Cody. Like, because she, she has access to the... Like, once she convinced Mary to get that divorce... And that was the last time, like up until that point, Robin and Mary thick as thieves. As soon as Mary gave Robin a divorce, that's when Robin started talking shit to Mary. But once Robin had the legal marriage, then it's all about the TV cameras because she has access to Cody's money. She, before that, she had access a little bit to Cody's money through child support because of Ari and because of, uh, she had Solomon after she got married, but, but through uh, Solomon. She had access to the uh, to his, his some access to his money, but once they realized that the show was still going and they got to like season five, then all of a sudden she had to get married. She wanted to marry into the family, make sure her money was locked in. She had access to all his money, and that's what she did. Because like like Janelle said it, Robin's name, Cody's name appears on every piece of property out there at Coyote Pass. Robin's name, whether it's on the property or not, if Cody's name appears on the property, she has rights to it. Period. Period. And please don't fall for the trap. And, and I would say this to anybody. Please don't fall for the trap that, oh, if you sign a, a post-nuptial agreement, that somehow you might be able to get out of uh, taking her name off of the property and she won't have any rights to it, etc., etc., etc. Please don't fall for that bullshit. There are people who have solid prenuptial agreements who get their prenuptial agreements thrown out after divorce. They get the, the agreement re removed. So the idea that all of a sudden she's going to be relieved, like especially with Robin, I don't trust nothing with her. I wouldn't trust that not a stitch. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, Janelle, like she put Cody's, kept Cody's name on her property on Coyote Pass because she helped him pay it off. Don't worry. Robin's going to take her name off and just be me and your name and she ain't going to have nothing to do with it. No, 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 no. We'd have to get that. That that would have to be locked in for me to even think about doing that. And I might not even trust it. That, no, her name need to come up off of it totally. Oh, well, yeah, because, you know, Cody's property. And that was another thing they said. Oh, Cody's property. If something happens to him, this will be my estate. The four acres will be my estate. Cody's property, if he dies... Then that, you know, hinting that it's going to be divided amongst the wives or whatever. That's bullshit. You still won't get some of it. And the fact that you're married to him, his property, if he dies, would be given to you. He can will some of his property away. If, yo, know, oh, he, it's all his property. He can will some of it away, but because it's community property and that's his wife, she has rights to it. Like, and I don't give a shit when nobody say, look, if that's his wife, she can take him to court and a judge gets to decide whether the will is in, in a force, whether the uh, documentation he had as far as classifying ownership on the title is, is valid or not. That's too many people with their hands in the pot for me. Nope. Her name come off of this. Your name comes off of this. If I'm Janelle or I'm Mary... We're no longer married. We're no longer together. There's no reason why your name is on my shit. Just like there's no reason for my name to be on your shit. So unless we going to do that, unless my name gets to come on your property too, there's no reason why you're on my stuff. So you go over there with Robin. Go sit with your friend. I mean, that's, it's ridiculous. So a uh, Tina guy. With the uh, five dollar super chat, James, with all the money Cody has made from TLC, how come he hasn't bought a subscription to Hair Club for Men? 
<laughs> laugh my ass off. Because <laughs> they wouldn't have him. <laughs> they would not have him. They said, you too far going, hustler. <laughs> and besides, he wouldn't be a part of the hair club for men. He'd be a part of their hair plugs for men. Because his, 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 his shit is long gone. Like, if you ever watch, like, some of the older episodes, it's not just back this way, like, on the sides. It cuts across, too. Like, his hair loss, his little hair loss cuts across. That's why he spends so much time pulling so much of it back. Because his shit is, like, he got a patch here that he pulls back. It's not, you know, it's not just, it's just not creating a widow's peak on the sides. He's got a patch. <laughs> He's got a patch, like, right in the middle on the crown of his head. Not that, you know, shit happens. Like, I, I got hair now. Who knows? Like, 10 years, my shit might turn on me, too. Like, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, I, I always say that my hair might stick around. Because, you know, if it turn on me, I'll shave this shit. Like, I, I've been bald before. I don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> you leave me. You're not loyal. Put a knife in my kidneys. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, but I mean, that's just what it comes down to. Like, don't, I, I would advise them all. Like, to be honest with you, best case scenario for me, take that property, get your evaluation, subsect the property out, pay the property off, break the property up into four divisions. Me, if I'm Robin, or not Robin, if I'm Janelle or I'm Mary, I'm selling my property and I'm out. I'm hatting up. I'm going to buy myself a piece of property somewhere far away from y'all. And if we get together, we get together. But I'm not going to build a house that I got to look at you mothers and you my neighbors. Like, it's just, it's dumb, dude. It's a dummy, dude. You know what I mean? And, like, even with Cody, like, oh, I got to have the fifth property because that way the kids have access to it. I got a clip about that, too. Janelle said early on that she wanted to have in writing that each one of the family members would have access to the, uh, the supposed pond. I don't know why they keep trying to argue over that pond. It's disgusting. But, but you got to have access to the pond. They put a line in it, I guess. I don't know. Even then, I don't think you can put a line in it. Like, I don't think that you can make it a pond. Like, I just don't think you can do it. But, um, but she said, we got to have it in writing. And if it was a pond and it was something like a swimming hole or something like that, it was an attraction, then yeah, it would make sense for you to put it in writing because what could happen is very well what did happen all of a sudden he gets in an argument with janelle's kids and he doesn't want to deal with them anymore then what do you do now all of a sudden if he if he doesn't let you into his house because you don't respect his wife he's not going to let you come over and start swimming in his little pool you don't have access to it so you might as well just like i said it's no point like it's the relationships are too broken for you to sit here and try to put houses next to each other and suffer through that. Now, it makes sense for them to keep talking about, you know, you guys can move next to me and you guys can live next door. Why? Because I need to keep this show going so I can keep getting this TLC check. So I can keep my wife. Yeah, that's what Cody would say. Yeah, I want you guys to build next door. Because if you don't build next door and you're not around and you're not here to film, you're not here to, you know, do the thing. So... But bump that. You guys aren't getting any advantage by living next to this Joker. Especially Christine and Janelle. Like, if you guys keep going back to him, quiet as it's kept, you're going to start, like, eventually you're going to start losing people because people are going to be disinterested in watching you suffer through it. And even with Mary, like, to be honest with you, in Mary's scenario, how many people were actually tired of listening to her complain about not being with Cody? That was like, that shit was long in the tooth. That storyline was long in the tooth as hell. Like, you go, because uh, you were about 10 seasons. A good, well, about 10 seasons. Yeah. Yeah, about 10 seasons of her sitting there talking about she want to be with Cody and Cody don't want to be with her. Because, I mean, catfishing happened about nine, season nine. So, you went about 10 seasons of, you know, I want to be with Cody. Cody don't want to be with me. And, uh, uh. And we need to be together. We married. Like, you get tired of listening to that shit after a while. Like, okay, he don't want to be with you. Let it go. You know, and, and watching Christine and, and Janelle trying to put themselves back through that meat grinder of being with this Joker, it becomes annoying. And I don't want to see them. I want to see them survive this and thrive after this. I don't want to see them keep struggling through this, the same thing because it's depressing. After a while, it's depressing. I feel bad enough for Janelle that, that she had to walk out of this relationship where she has to continue this relationship even though she doesn't want to be in this relationship. But
because she she was faced with the reality that she might have to walk away with nothing. Because to be honest with you, I think that if Janelle was similarly situated to Christine when she left Cody or when she broke up with Cody, she would have had it clean the fuck up when she when she when things wasn't going good. And he started arguing with her sons. I think she would have done, okay, you know what? I'm out, deuces, see ya, bye. And she would have been gone. I a hundred percent believe that. I don't think she stuck around because she wanted to be with Cody and she wanted to try to work stuff out. She realized that she doesn't have nothing. So she stuck around. And that's the, and to be honest with you, this is part of the reason why I disagree so heavily with a lot of the, the uh, polygamy as it's practiced. Because it creates a scenario, a situation where you can financially abuse and restrain and constrain these women into situations they no longer want to be in, but, but they can't leave because if they leave, they can't provide for themselves or for the, the freaking 10, 12 kids you give them, pump in them. So you, you, every child they have becomes another link in the chain that keeps them bound to this man. And I, and I, like, I just don't like, I'm, it's just problematic for me. Ah, oh. <laughs> Cindy from I said, Robin is the biggest, baddest coyote on coyote pass. <laughs> I agree with that. I don't think she's a coyote. I don't even think she's a coyote. She's a damn snake. I mean, she's a water moccasin out there at that, at that, uh, <laughs> in that pond. She's a damn water moccasin in that pond, damn snake. Snake, tricky-ass trick chick. I mean, you can't mess with her. Tricks are for kids. You know what I mean? They, and they play kids' games. <laughs> Alicia said, Cody better stop eating at home. Robin may slip him some of that poison. You know what crazy as it is? I, I, I was watching uh, some of them, um, like, ID <laughs> things. Never had a repeat show. Like, it, <laughs> they show, like, a lot of them killings. Like, them women be wise with knives and, and you know, <laughs> hoes who kill their bros. Like, you know, I mean, they have all kinds of shows on there. Like, women, newlyweds, who did I marry, all kinds of stuff. And they, they always have, like, a run of women who just poison the hell out of their husband. Like, you be there eating grits or something, the next thing you know, oh, my stomach hurt. And then <laughs> the next thing you know, you in the bed, she keep feeding you. You looking scared. <laughs> oh, what? No more soup. Don't eat your soup. You'll feel better. And she don't let nobody come around and visit you. <laughs> That's going to be Cody's ass. Please stop feeding me this soup. <laughs> Okay, well, just eat this. <laughs> you can tuck your little napkin in your shirt. <laughs> like, homeboy, you in trouble. Because if she ever figure out, like I said, if she figure out, if she, and, and that is a point. Like, you know, we joke around about it, but that would be something I'm I'm scared about. Because if she, as desperate as she is about the money and as serious she is about the money, because if you watch that, uh, if you watch that, that thing tonight, when they was talking about that money, Robin's ass was serious. And Robin it very rarely puts her foot down about anything. But if you watch this series, because I went back earlier today trying to pull some clips because I was going to have some clips for the night show. I uh, couldn't get it done. But when I was going back and I was watching some of them earlier clips and they would talk about that money. They talk about dividing up Coyote Pass. They talk about like how much money Coyote Pass was worth when, when Cody came in the house. Robin had a little grin on her face. <laughs> She's serious about her money. She do not play when it comes to her money. She dead ass about that money. And the thing with that is when you have somebody who is in a desperate situation like Robin has been in and, you know, and I'm not saying that she a killer. I'm not saying she got it in her. I'm just saying like, uh, like, like Alicia said, I wouldn't be eating at home. I wouldn't be eating at home unless I made it. You know, I wouldn't be eating there because... You know, the show go, and she might feel like, you know, the doors start closing in. She might get desperate because she ain't trying to go back to the poorhouse either. And that's when people get dangerous, you know. She ain't trying to be poor either. And there's a there was a rumor, too, that uh, Cody might be trying to switch a lot of stuff and, and give it to Robin and provide Robin with a lot of stuff. Here's the secret to the sauce. I can see them trying to give things to Robin to hide them away from Cody or hide, hide them away from the other wives. Because if the other wives 
in their mind, because Cody was like the central figure, he was the husband, they may believe, and this is speculation on my part, granted, but Cody and Robin very well may believe that if the wives, Christine, Mary, Janelle, come at OG3, if they come after them, they'll go after Cody. So I can see a universe where Cody, who's just habitually bad with money and investment, thinking that he can hide assets in Robin's name and they'll keep it separate. And that's part of the reason why I think he's always been so adamant about saying Robin's house, Robin's house, Robin's house, Robin's house. That's not Robin's house. That's Robin and Cody's house. That's their marital asset. Like, but he keeps calling it Robin's house. That's not fucking Robin's house. That's Cody and Robin's house. So if Cody gets sued, the OG3 sue him, they're going after Cody and Robin. There's no way that they can separate the two of them. I know that, but I'm not sure that Cody and Robin know that. And if they, if she ever figures that out, Cody ass might be in trouble. And, you know, I'll, if I was Cody, I would be nervous. You know, but, yeah, you know. I wouldn't be Cody because, to be honest with you, I don't like dating women. Or I would never. I'm. I when I was out there running them streets, you know, I wouldn't date women who would date me because of what I had. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> if you have a lot, you don't talk about what you have. Let it. Let that shit be a surprise. Like you got a nice house, and I say this to young guys. You know, any young man that listen to me, any young lady listen to me. If you got a shit ton of money. Leave your money hidden. You know, let that be a surprise. That you, you know, if you're going to do nice things, do nice things. You know, uh, uh, like you go to a nice restaurant. Yeah, this is special, you know, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to tell them like, yeah, girl, I got $300,000 in the bank. I got a house, a car, and, you know, motorcycles and boats and, and vacation homes and all that. That's for, some, that's for your wife. That's a conversation you have with a woman that you're about to marry. You, that's not a conversation that you, you know, open in line at the bar that you just meet somebody about how you, how much money you have. And then what you get to complain in a couple of years about it not being fair that they're only dating you because of how much you, what you have, like Cody is trying to do about the OG three. Oh, they only date me because of what I have and the money and the stuff that I can provide them. It's not fair. Well, I don't know. Are you guys still sitting in chats? Cause my chat is frozen. <laughs> Maybe guys, maybe I'm here by myself. <laughs> James, you are crazy. <laughs> but you know, I, I'd say that to, I had a I had a buddy who used to do that all the time. Like we were young guys, and he he was able to uh, get himself a house. He was making good money, and the first thing you would say to women, "Yeah, I got a house that I make, da, da, da. and I got this kind of car and this kind of truck and da da." And then you'd be wondering why these women are using them for his money. Because that's the first thing you told them, dummy. Of course they're going to use you for your money. Because the real ones realize what you try, that you're trying to impress them with stuff that doesn't really matter. And they don't give you a shot. They're not continuing a conversation with you. They kind of move on. And you're left with the ones who are there for your money. And that's kind of how it works out. And when, when Cody talks about Robin... And like I said, my envisionment of when he was talking to Robin and propping himself up and the game he was running on Robin was all about like how much money he had and how he was taking care of these three women, how he was everything to these women and he was providing for them. They hardly work. They hardly do anything. They hardly kick in money. If they do work, anything they make, they use for themselves and their kids. But he takes care of everything else and he's the boss and blah, 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 blah. And he puts them in life of luxury. He about to get his own TV show and he's going to star on the show. Hey, baby, would you like to be on the show too? You cute. You could be a star. And that's what the game he was running on. Her. The problem is, is that you can't be mad now. If that's the game you ran on her, that's how you got her. You can't be mad at her because that was your agreement when you first started dating. If your agreement was, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to provide for you because I'm Mac Daddy and I got nothing but money and I'm kicking dough out, and that's what you do, then you can't be mad that when the money run out, she's gone too. Because that's how you got her. How you get your woman is how you lose your woman. If you get your woman because you promise her that you can buy her nice things, you can't be mad when you can't give her nice things or some, or better yet, when somebody else can give her nicer things. 
You're like, who the hell go to a job that don't want to get promoted or a raise? <laughs> you might like your job. You might like what you do. But if somebody's willing to triple your salary to do the same job, then why wouldn't you leave that job? I'm just saying. Oh, she's not loyal. There's no loyalty on the workplace. <laughs> How many people work a job that if they stop paying, you going to show up on Monday? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Like, I don't care if you work at a if you work at a chapstick factory and they stop they come to you one day and be like, Do you like working here? Yeah, man, I love working here because I feel like I'm contributing to fresh lips every day by making these chapstick. It's amazing. And they say, Okay, well guess what, y'all? We can't pay you no more, but we can give you chapstick to take home. Yeah, this will be my last day. <laughs> I can't eat chapstick. I can't be, you know. I can't pay my rent in chapstick. I can't put my kids through college with no damn chapstick. So you can kiss my ass on that chapstick tip. That's how that works. Let me close my chat down. I'm going to reopen it again. Because I think that... I think you guys have been writing stuff. And I can't see none of it. Yeah, you have. Hello, chat. Let's see. That's messed up. My chat was like 20 minutes ago. I thought I was talking to myself. Oh my, OMG, it's Nancy. Thank you so much. If you're still in the chat, hit like on the on this great live. Love James's commentary. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. Let me hit my little button. <laughs> Carolyn R. Oh, oh my goodness, what a good question. She said, <laughs> "So when they had their stock, so if they had their stockpile, Christine left, and Cody and Robin took their food, etc. How did they not have enough chicken to cook when Truly and Isabel was over? <laughs> Maybe they weren't going to stockpiles. That's for emergency use only." For kids I like. <laughs> oh, wow. James, another merch I did. Don't bother with the love if you are not going to be loyal, right? Don't bother with the love if you, you know, if it's not loyalty. Don't bother with the love. You know, one of the dumbest things I ever heard, because I hear guys say that shit. Like, uh, you know, like some of the, um, because there was a while that I was like criticizing a lot of the Manosphere people. So they'll show up in my uh, my feed sometimes. And one of the dumbest things I've heard was men don't care about love. They care about loyalty. Or men don't care about love. They care about respect. If you don't respect a the man, then they don't want to bother with the love. That's bullshit. Okay? Let me just be the first one to say, that's bullshit. Bullshit. I can have, there are people I didn't like, or like even like growing up or whatever. There are people I didn't like. Like you, and dare I say, I wouldn't call them an enemy because that's a little too strong, but genuinely didn't like. Okay. But I respected them. I respected them. I didn't like them, but I respected them. If I saw them in the street, someone on site. <laughs> it's going to be some furniture moving around. See, catch in the street. Oh, it's on and popping. But I respected him. I respected him. Like and respect, love and respect, those are two different things. Now, in my mind, if you love me, you respect me. You can't love me and you can't love me and not respect me. But you can respect me and not give a damn about me. And, and so for you to always put up that, you know, if you don't respect me, it's not about respect. It's about you understanding your place in the universe as an adult you don't always get the things that you want welcome to adulthood you hell adulthood shit you learn that when you're a kid you don't always get the things you want half the times every time every time you want something it's not necessarily the best thing for you so you shouldn't get everything you want you know how what a shitty person you would be if you got everything you ever wanted you never were denied anything you wanted. 
everybody did what you wanted them to do, when you wanted them to do it, how you wanted them. You know what kind of person you would be if you got everything you wanted? You'd be a horrible person. And when I hear Cody sit there and talk about loyalty and respect, what you're saying is, I'm not getting everything I want, so therefore I don't want to deal with you anymore. Forget what you want. What you're saying is you don't know how to deal with people. You don't know how to deal with people's emotions. Ain't that, my friend, makes you an asshole. Uh, let's see what we got to say. <laughs> Yeah, DB said, uh, remember when Robin said, what she said about the property? She said, Cody's property will probably go to the other kids, other's kids. Uh, Cody picks, Robin picks and chooses what she wants to say. Robin is a bullshit artist. Point blank. That's my two. Robin's a bullshit artist. Because she understands like I understand. That if Cody dies, that property reverts to her. Because she's married to him. That, that's his wife. His property is her property. There is no separation. Of, oh, this is Robin's property. The four acres is Robin's. And the, and the two acres and the two acres will be Cody's. That's bullshit. That's, that's Robin and Cody's property. Period. Like, I, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, 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 like, part of me, my frustration with the show a little bit is, like, I, 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 I will play the game up to a point. But the reality of this situation is the reality of the situation. These two are married. She can sit there and say, I'm tired of people trying to lump us together. You are lumped together because you're married. Your property is his property. His property is your property. You can't own separate property. You're married in the state of Arizona. So <laughs> unless you move somewhere else, his property is your property. Your property is his property. And Amy G said, "Two dollars super chat said one can demand respect or command respect. I choose to command respect because if you demand respect, very rarely are you given respect for demanding it. <laughs> and if you have to, if you have to ask for respect, then you're probably not getting it anyway. <laughs> They're getting you into what they used to call the Philly fake out. Like <laughs> you're not getting respect at all. <laughs> they'll they'll fake it like Cody was talking about." Because <laughs> either they're going to respect you or they're not going to respect you. Like this. <laughs> and respect, that even to a point, like respecting people is not a choice. Like it's something that you do. Like I don't think you really choose to respect people. Either you respect them or you don't. And so you can act respectful. There's, there's a little difference. But how you feel about somebody is how you feel about them. And I, and you know. If you don't respect them, you don't respect them. Like, Cody doesn't respect the OG3. And it doesn't matter what they did for him or what logical decision he should make in order to respect them. Because if it was a choice, then he could have respected Mary and kept Mary around. If it was a choice, he could have respected Christine and Janelle and kept them around. But because he didn't respect them, he didn't feel it in his heart. And more to the point, he didn't feel like he needed to respect them. He just felt like he just... To him, respect is, I'm not cussing you out. And so, maybe maybe we, we would have to come to a consensus on what actual respect is. But, you know, maybe if we stretch it. But for me, I think that respect is something that you either feel or you don't feel. You know, so I'd rather command respect. Like, you give me respect and I command it. Or if you don't respect me, then it is what it is. We don't have to necessarily, you know, mess with each other. And and Christine or Mary said something I've been saying forever. Like she said it tonight. Like I don't want to be around people who don't want me around. I've said that shit forever. Like I never want to be around people who don't want want to have me around. Like if you don't want me around, I don't want to be around you. I don't ask to go to parties I'm not invited to. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, please, can I come to your party? Fuck that. If you, if you don't want me there, I'm not coming. Because all that's going to happen is I'm going to show up and you don't want me there and I'm just going to stand in the corner holding my drink or I'm going to be out there doing my thing, dancing or whatever. You guys going to be looking at me on the floor like, look at this asshole. Like, there's nothing I'm going to do that's going to make you happy that I'm there if you don't want me there. So if you don't want me there, I don't want to be there. I'm not, you know, I'm not begging anybody. 
And I and I'm glad that uh You know, I don't I don't and I'm glad that Mary got to a point where she started to to voice that. She started to stick up for herself. And I can respect that. Like I said, Mary probably isn't one of my favorite characters on the show. But at the same time, I respect her position and her standing up for herself. Like I like that that's a long way for me to start to like her. Cause I'm tired of watching her get, you know, kicked around kicked around by these chumps, especially. Alicia, yeah, she says that uh, this show blew up uh, like a bomb of truth and reality. That polygamy does not work if you're in love. And that's part of the problem is that I think ultimately when you look at the OG3, logically, a lot of what Co C Cody had was credited to his relationship with the three older wives. Like, they helped to shape him into the man that he is today. A lot of the successes that he's had, even though he heralds that they're his successes, actually belong to the wives that he has summarily, summarily dismissed. But when you look at it, I don't genuinely think he was in love with any of them. And the only wife he was in love with is the wife that he has currently. And that's the sad part about it is that, and then, and I know I've said it before and people get offended when I say it, but the way Cody has treated the OG three, he treats them like baby mamas. He treats them like relationships that he was in that didn't really work, but you just keep them around because you just haven't gotten around to getting rid of them. And then when Robin comes along and you meet somebody who, you know, maybe, you know, as a young guy, a lot of guys will sit around and say, oh, you know, I'll never get married. And then they meet this one lady and then all of a sudden they couldn't see themselves not being with this person and not being married. And that's where Robin is. A lot of this stuff that Robin, the reason why Robin was able to come into the relationship and change so much of the family dynamics, family traditions, and the family culture is because Cody was willing to make those changes to keep her around and to bring her into the family. So because Robin came into the family and Cody had the emotional attachment to her that he did because he was in love with her, then it felt like, at least to the wives, that instead of Robin assimilating into the family, the family had assimilated into Robin and Cody's relationship. And it's, it's a completely different experience. So it does, like, I don't think polygamy works up until the point that if you have somebody who's doing it out of duty and obligation, then it'll never work because people will never be fulfilled in those relationships. They'll think they fulfilled, you know, when you starving and somebody giving you crackers, you think that you are getting all the sustenance you need, but then somebody slip up and slide you a steak. <laughs> you know? Oh, this is what food is like. Oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> You know what I mean? You eating gruel. You're like, oh wow, you know, I just need enough to keep myself alive, keep my energy up. But then all of a sudden you start eating real. You know, you sitting down, you got the little potatoes on the side, you got the turkey dinner or whatever. Like, this is amazing. I look forward to dinner now. You know, it's a different experience. And then with with uh, you know, as much as I might bash Robin, you know, and contrary to Cody's belief. I'm not bashing the fact that Cody found a woman and he fell in love with her and he wants to be with her and he decided to marry her and, and build a family. I'm not bashing him for that at all. I bash him because you met, met a white woman who you wanted to marry and be with and you disrespected her and your family by not giving her the time and attention that she deserved, Robin, and not and stringing along and, and stringing along, Nick's not, stringing along the OG3 and making them think that you're still in a relationship with them, that you're still in love with them, and that you're still going to meet your obligations as a husband. And you knew full well you had no intention of doing any of that. It was always just going to be you and Robin because that's who you wanted to be with. That's who you were attracted to. That's who you were attached to. So if you, you know, forget the, you know, tearing you apart and all that bullshit. 
Like, nobody cares whether y'all are together. Everybody knows you're together. I'm just happy that you're finally admitting it. That you, that you, that you man up and you nut up and you start to say with your chest that me, this is my lady and we going to be together. Fine. I'm okay with that. You do what you got to do, player. Knock yourself out. But don't sit here and, and drag it out and pretend like, you know, you, you are open to a relationship with these other women when you're not. That you were doing for these other women when you weren't. That you were taking care of their kids when you weren't. And my question is, and you know, even to uh, Alicia's point, you know, when you are with these other three women and you decided, you know, it was fine that you decided to marry them and be with them, or, you know, quote unquote, marry them. But you want to have a relationship with them and be with them. That's fine. You want to get somebody else and then dump them. That, you know, it is what it is. That's the marketplace, whatever. That's what you got to sign up for. It is what it is. That is bad and weird and messed up in itself, twisted in itself. The part where it becomes unforgivable is the moment you start bringing children into this situation. If you knew you don't want to be with them, you know you don't feel shit for them, then you don't start bring, making babies with them. That's the, you know, and I'm not saying that these people shouldn't exist. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that you don't start making children with people that you don't plan on being with. This is not a game. It's not, it's not like they're not tokens. You know, these, these kids aren't t-shirts, you know, been there, done that. And I got the t-shirt. No, forget that. You know, if you're not serious about these women, then, then let them know that it is what it is. And this is where, where, like, I think last week I talked about it, the two points I'd always talked about, like making sure that they're age appropriate for, for entering into any type of relationship. And two, you want to make sure that they have knowing consent, informed consent when they get involved with these relationships. If you tell OG3, look, you know, I'm going to be with you, but if I ever meet somebody who I'm really in love with, then I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then if they decide to get in that relationship with you, that's kind of on them. But don't sit there, I love you, I love you, I love you. We're going to be together. We one family. The big picture, and you tell all that bullshit. And then one day you come in there and talk about, yeah, I don't want to be with you no more because the woman that you brought to the family, yeah, I decided to stay with her. Like, that ain't right. Uh, he married married way too young. Yeah, he did. And this is Lizzie B with the $5 Super Chat. Lizzie B, what's up? How you doing, Lizzie? Uh, he married Janelle out of convenience. Yeah. That and he was renting a room from Janelle because Janelle was making that paper. I think Janelle was making more money than he was. How about that? Uh, married Christine for clout. Absolutely. And married Robin for love. You're right, James. Thank you. But yeah, I think he married he married Mary out of a form of obligation. And Mary was the young thing that was available. She was willing to marry him and willing to participate in polygamy. So she was hitting a couple boxes, but she wasn't somebody that he was necessarily in love with. You know, Janelle, convenience, like you said, I think she was making more money. She could help, you know, uh, with the finances as far as Mary was concerned. And again, she was okay with polygamy, checking some boxes. Christine, you know, she's church royalty. She was going to elevate Cody within the church, help him to realize his superstardom. Before there was sister wives, there was the opportunity for him to rise in the church. And that's what Christine was about. So... <laughs> And then when he met the, you know, the Diesel Gene model, came in, started doing that freaky date, <laughs> curled his toes up. And then all of a sudden, my man was like, oh, forget this stuff. Forget the church. <laughs> I mean, I'm wrong for that. I'm wrong for that one. Yeah, that's another thing. Look, when she, when, um, when she came, when Robin came in and started talking to, uh, Mary, you know, and like I said, when Cody gave that whole thing about, you know, you didn't want it to be the pathetic relationship and all that stuff. One of the things that really hit me was I, I was actually going to come out with a video a little while ago where I was going to talk about how Mary is, uh, Robin's friend, but Robin is not Mary's friend. And I was going to talk about, cause that Cody always throws the word loyalty around, there's nothing loyal about Robin in the way Robin treats Mary and their friendship. Now, that was my position before. 
But after watching tonight and after hearing Cody say that about the pathetic relationship and throwing that in, in uh, Mary's face, because he was saying that for Mary. He was saying that for Mary's benefit too. Like, oh, this relationship is pathetic. And when he said it like that, he let Mary know that this is what I've talked to Robin about. And at that moment, what crossed my mind was Mary, if Mary is my friend, I say, Mary, you know, you think about your friendship with that young lady that you have in Padawan. That's your friend. Like, you treat her kind of fucked up, like the way you talk to her and stuff. Like, what color is this? Is this round? I don't like round. Uh, you know, she does that stuff. It's weird. But that's your friend. That's somebody that you laugh with and you joke with. Do you have that kind of relationship with Robin? No. Robin said that she's jealous of your relationship with her because you guys talk and you guys are able to associate with one another in a more comfortable way. Your relationship is more, more of a rivalry with Robin. How is it a rivalry? <laughs> Robin's man don't want... <laughs> What, Mary? That's not a rivalry. What are you talking about? And when I listen to Cody talk about how pathetic her relationship was, knowing full well this is a conversation he had with Robin, the one thing that occurred to me is that Mary, Robin doesn't think of you like a friend or even like a little fucked up friend. Robin thinks of you like a pet. Robin thinks you're a pet. She cares about you, and the tears she have is like somebody who lost a dog. We're gonna have to put we're gonna have to put old yellow down. Oh yellow, old yellow, old yellow. He my bestest friend. You're a damn pet, Mary. She keep you around like a pet. She invites you to stuff. You get to hang out with her kids. You get to go play with her kids. You like the puppy. You get to play with her kids. But when you talk about respect, you you might love the, the dog, but you don't respect the dog like you respect your kids, I don't think. Most people don't. You know, because it's, it's your pet. You know, you might love your pet, but it's your pet. You know? You still have, you know, <laughs> as much as you may love your dog, you don't let your dog make his own decisions because dogs will make bad decisions. <laughs> Unless you try to lose your house, don't let your dog make decisions for you. <laughs> What do you mean I can't bite the mailman? No, you can't bite the damn mailman. He came on the steps, didn't he? He looked me in the face. He saw me. <laughs> he don't respect me. He respect me now, though. <laughs> you don't let your dog make your own decision. Mary is her pet. And that's how she treated her. She treated Mary like a pet. Like she was beneath her. And it should strike Mary that that's what she was doing. And it should hit different. Like, and I think... Even when they were, maybe if Mary was being accurate about telling uh, Robin or decided to tell Robin about uh, moving away and giving up on the whole relationship or whatever, if that was accurate, like she wasn't planning on doing, that's just something she decided to do. Maybe Mary got the note, and I'm hoping that's the case. Like, I mean, it could have very well been planned and staged for production's sake, but I'm hoping that Mary got the hint that this is what this chick thinks about you. And she looked at her and said, oh, hell no. Let me go ahead and, and run this. Let me run this play. <laughs> I'll run this route on this chick and show what time it is. And you know when I leave, I'm taking my wallet with me. No, you know, I was going to sit on a porch with Mary's wallet. <laughs> and my grandkids said not to say what I signed up for. And, that, and that's the thing, too, that Cody needs to recognize. Mary or uh, Robin did not sign up to be the struggle wife. Cody, if you ever watch this shit, I don't know if you will or you won't, but I'm telling you now, there are women, there's an old saying, you know, money will get you the woman that you want, the struggle will get you the woman that you need. Now, the money got you robbing the deal. Former Diesel Jean, that boy, that's some bullshit. That's some bullshit. <laughs> that chick, what? She might wear Diesel jeans. She wasn't modeling them, Jones. So maybe she modeled it. You know, he's like former Diesel Jean model. You know, because where did she model them at? In my living room when she went shopping. You know, took my credit card, hit all the stores, 
came back and she would show me what she bought. She was modeling them clothes. Diesel Jean model. Victoria's Secrets model. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you look at that and you say like, uh, you know, she, she came into the family. She didn't come into the family to struggle. She came into the family to thrive. And she came in because you had money. Now, if you had a woman who came in and she's about you, and this is why I'm a big proponent of you not using your money your, or fame or influence to try to, to pick up women or, or secure partners or men or whatever, whatever you into. Part of the reason I'm not into that is because if you have these things and they're there for these things, then they're not there to help you build. And the likelihood that you're going to find a builder as opposed to a taker and a spender is very unlikely. And when Cody tells Robin that I got these women that I, three women, I take care of them already. You come with me and da da da. You can move in my house. And when the filming starts, you know, I'm going to be making all this money. I'm going to have you on TV girl, blah, 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 blah. And she comes in for that. She's not there to help you build a TV show and build an empire. She's there to help you build an empire while you're building an empire from, from like midway up and, and sky's the limit. But she's not trying to lose everything and then help you build it back. Big shout out to Rochelle J with the five dollar super chat. Yes, but we know Sabin kicks dogs. Yeah, she does. <laughs> she kicks dogs. I wouldn't be surprised you're kicking kids too. Same with Mathetic. She was kicking her too. Yeah. But that's just where they at though. I agree with Rochelle J. Big shout out to Rochelle J. Oh, make sure you guys hit that uh, like button too. Like it, the likes, get the likes, get the likes. But um, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. HBO special. But uh, I agree. I agree with that. Like I think that, like if you have a builder, you could you could have the world, right? And that's why I kind of like the idea of you, you know, building with somebody. You build with somebody. Your success is just as much your success as their success. And their success is just as much your success as it is their success. And you share in that. And as you're building together, you're working together, you value the things that you have that much more because you put them together together. And the crazy part about it is if you build with somebody and you get a million dollars, if you lose that million dollars, then this person is willing to come back and be like, you know, we lost our million Let's get back. Let's get that mill back and let's get another mill on top of it. So that way, if we lose a million, we still got a million. Come on, let's do this, me and you, babe. If you get somebody and you already have a million in the bank and you lose a million, you might be losing your wife too. And I think that that's where Cody's going to find himself. Just scrap in, okay? AKA Catherine Green with the 499 Super Chat. Hi, James. Hi, great show. Yeah, hey, what's up? Just scrap it. Glad to see you. Glad you're in the house. Welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. Yeah, I haven't seen sarcasm either. Sarcasm. Hope you're in the house. Hope you. If you're not here, hope you're doing well. All right, Alexa Power. Yeah, what time is it? I'm so sorry. Oh, it's almost 1.30. All right, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this bad boy up because cause I got to get some work done. I got I to, gotta, oh, it's plenty of work to do, y'all. Cause I'm coming with this. I'm coming with some receipts on this next one. <laughs> Sandra Gilbert says she fell asleep. I'm talking to myself. I'm here. <laughs> Like some power, I say, I'm not moving state to state. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's just crazy. Like, I, I don't not understand these folks. And that's another thing, because if you watch the Sister Wives, I got to do that thing on a uh, pocket watch. One. I got so many videos I got to do with these people. I guess good. I'll still have videos coming out after the season's over, too, just so you guys know. Because there's so much stuff that I wanted to talk about, to, like backfill. Uh, some of this stuff because I wanted to talk about their finances too, like pocket watch them a little bit because the ridiculous nature of where they are financially makes no sense. And a lot of it has to do, in my opinion, with 
just poor spending habits, like the way they spend money. And it's not so, and I'm not looking at Janelle and Christine. I'm looking at directly at Robin and Cody. Like the way they spend money and some of the investments that they made just don't make sense. Like the, uh, like buying the houses, having the houses built in Vegas and then finally getting equity in those houses and selling those houses as opposed to putting, um, getting conventional loans on those houses. You have probably had arms on the house, so you sell those houses so you can get this big cash out. Then you sell the houses with the anticipation that you're going to be able to provide for and take care of your family. Realistically, you sold those houses because uh, Robin's name and your name wasn't on all those houses. So you had them sell those houses so that you can purchase property that you can get your name on, Cody. That's why you sold those houses. Just bad, bad, bad fucking habits. But then you say, oh, we're going to sell the houses in Vegas and we're going to move to a cheaper area because it's so expensive in Vegas and we need to find something that's more reasonable because I'm going to be 82 by the time, like that's what he was saying about uh, 72 or 82 by the time the youngest baby went to college or finished college, some ridiculous age. Then they move to a more expensive area and try to buy property in a more expensive place. So a lot of them, a lot of the financial situations they find themselves in and the financial problems that they have are direct results of the fact that they're making bad investments. Like you're making bad investments. If you want your money to go further, you don't move from uh, the middle of Pennsylvania to New York City. Especially if you are on a TV show. Because the secret to the sauce of TV shows TV shows, even this reality show, is an opportunity. It's not a career. Because once once this show ends, let's be real. Once TLC shows ends, the likelihood that they're going to be in a situation where they're going to make this kind of money again is very slim to almost none. Because even with some of the multi-level marketing businesses that the ladies are involved with, and I'm no shade on them for the, making their way because they doing their thing, but with the multi-level marketing businesses, a lot of the accreditation that you have in those businesses is because of the show. And if the show fame goes away, the show recognition goes away, then even some of those MLMs might start to fall off. They, then, of course, you get into it. Like, I think they could still, they probably could, uh, Janelle and Christine and Mary, I think they're high enough to where they might be able to sustain themselves a little better. But Cody, what are you going to do? Like you, you start these businesses, the businesses you start are losing money hand over fist and you're using the TLC money to replenish the business losses that you have from the businesses that you start. And then you don't have and then you're living in an expensive place. And then it forces you into a situation where you're trying to steal property from your other wives and you're trying to redirect funds from this account to that account and just a whole lot of foolishness, you're putting yourself in a bad situation. A lot of jeopardy is happening. So we really got to start digging into some of these uh, finances, which I'll, I'll do, but this is crazy as hell. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Deanne Lynn said, uh, the MLM, not just the, the show, but also the church. Yeah, because you get, a lot of these communities, they, they pull, uh, when they join these MLMs, especially in Utah, it's big in, in Utah. They'll join uh, these multi-level marketing, network marketing groups or whatever. And they'll tie into their community. So if you're not a part of the church and you're not on the show anymore, then you limit your uh, social circles, which limits your basically your customers or people who are going to sign up for your MLM. Uh oh wow. Blue Jay said Robin's only credit is her breakdance video. I ain't know she had a breakdance video. I'm gonna have to find that shit now. Now you send me on a quest. <laughs> Don't be surprised you click on one of my videos and it opens up with her pop locking, you know? <laughs> What's up then? Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I swear, if she spit on her back, I'm through. It's over. It's over. I might have to take a shovel with that video because I'm gonna have to plant myself where I stand because that might, I'm gonna be dead and gone. Like, watch. <laughs> What's up, dude, sucker? <laughs> Look at 
the footwork, Robin. I have Cody in the back just clapping. And he'd be like, let me in, Robin. And he'd go in there and start dancing all crazy. <laughs> all beat like a hell. Like, that dude couldn't catch a rhythm if it was a cold. Like, it was terrible. Terrible dancers. My favorite part is, like, there was one point, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I am swear I'm going to wrap up. But there was one point where, uh, where Janelle was saying that she feels bad about dancing. And there was a woman who was a uh, Tamara. They used to let her do the shows. <laughs> The tell alls, but she started getting too real. Like she was just cutting through a lot of the bullshit, asking hard questions, and Cody started getting pissed. But um, <laughs> Janelle was like, "Well, you know, I don't like dancing because I don't want to uh, look bad." And Tamara was, <laughs> Tamara said, "Well, you ain't got you ain't got to worry about it. I've seen them dance. There ain't none of them killing it. So, <laughs> so you're in good company." And that's the thing. Like if you if if you ever in a situation, and I say this, if you're ever in a situation. Where you have an opportunity to dance, go the hell out there and dance. Have some fun. It's not a show. Like, nobody's out there watching you dance. Like, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. If they are watching you dance, there's something wrong with them. Okay? Dancing and singing. Go out there and have a good time. You know? The hell with them. Because you, you paid your money to get in a club, you dance. I'm going to dance. I don't give a shit who, who's watching. If you spending your time watching me, then you wasted your money. <laughs> Yeah, the simulation. She said, uh, they said, I love to see a lawyer from AZ who does fraud cases talk about this shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I think, like, if you start digging into it, I think that some there's going to be some problems. There's going to be a lot of, lot of stuff that you might say, like, there's some misappropriation of funds. Money is going in. It's not being accounted for or used for things that are for private use. Like, you can't, like, even in an LLC, like, you can't, there are ways that you can try to hide money and misappropriate money by calling it uh, uh, compensation, so on and so forth. But if Mary is putting in a ton of money and then all of a sudden the money is going towards, supposed to be going towards, like, room and board, but you're using it towards personal things, like, I don't understand how you could have, like, and this is just me. Maybe it's an understanding or agreement that they have in a family. But I don't understand how, if Mary is renting a house in Flagstaff and she doesn't have an asset, a tangible asset, and they're giving her money from the fund to rent that house, she could make the argument that, yes, I'm renting this house, even though I own Lizzie's Inn, in Padawan, that's my property, but I rent this house so that I can be around for taping. I'm doing this to as an expense to the business. That's a business expense. Robin owning a property and paying for her property, that's not a business expense. I don't think that's a business expense. And it certainly can't be written off as you taking off like, you know, the full payment out of the TLC fund. And having the other ladies pay for robbing a house. And they don't get any, like, they don't have any ownership in the house or any property. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just weird to me. Okay, Dan Lynn said that uh, some of the Duggars kids sued. Yeah, if, I think if, if the older kids sued, they could probably get some money. Yeah, yeah. Best part, Joe said, uh, I love that Cody's going to have to watch her laugh, Christine laugh. <laughs> and they're bringing out uh, David during the tell-all. Dave Woolley coming out, making his debut. And I know Cody's mad about that shit. Because that's what he was talking about. Like, when the uh, um, first episode of season one, where he was saying, I don't want some man coming in stealing my money. He was talking about David Dan Woolley. I think he was talking about Dave Woolley. Coming in, taking his money from him. Because Dave Woolley was going to replace him. Like, because they could legitimately do a show. You know, life app, like uh, somebody, I think somebody had said that before. Either here, I've seen it before in uh, in some of my chat logs or my comment section where they were saying, like, the show could be uh, Life After Polygamy. as a show suggestion. <laughs> you know, how is, how is uh, Dave Woolley treating Christine now? Are they in love? These are questions that fans want to know. They want to see Christine happy. They could. They have a show. There's an interest there. So, 
<laughs> Robin and Cody, not so much. <laughs> not so much. Yeah. Z yeah, and that's the thing, Layla. See, does he write off the uh, Dickinson stuff? Does he write off the uh, the uh, paintings on the walls? Is like expenses, decor, fulfillment. You know, there's a possibility that he could, and I can see Cody trying it. But there's a big difference, and this is one of the things that I was saying before. There's a big difference between people saying that they're doing a thing and people being smart enough to actually pull it off. And where I kind of suspect with Cody, at least in the way he presents himself, some of the investment he has, some of the ideas he had, that he's not smart enough to be able to pull this shit off. He get because if with some of this, you know, and I'm not. I'm not a embezzler or a misappropriator. So I'm just speaking out of theory. <laughs> just so we're very clear. <laughs> I'm not speaking from experience. But in, but just in my 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 um my view, if you get greedy, there's a there's an old saying. <laughs> there's an old saying. Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. If you claim a couple things here and there, on your taxes, you know, this or, you know, the house or some rent or whatever the case may be. When the people are over, we shoot for so many hours, so many days. And you keep a good log about that. And maybe you pad that number a little more than, you know, it is. You could probably get away with it. That's my, my, my opinion. Not a professional opinion, just my view. You probably get away with it. If you say that we film in this house 365, therefore that's why we need to rent that by purchase this home, and that's why we also need to put pictures like expensive paintings on the wall. We also need to do um uh Dickens and, and like expensive uh, uh uh ornaments and statues and things. And the, the people go back and they say, Okay, well, how many days a week? Now, how many episodes has the interior of Robin's house actually been featured in Sister Wives? And they look at the thing and they say, well, they've only been in that house, I think, a grand total of maybe three, four episodes this year. They've actually been inside Robin's house. You know, and two or three of those times was them self-taping during the holidays or whatever. When they had uh, Isabel and Truly Over. And they start going through the books then some of those deductions might come off. And a lot of those deductions, I don't think will be substantively upheld because I don't think that they have the, uh, they won't have the receipts. They won't have the documentation. So some of this stuff, you just do better if people don't look at it or look too hard at it, because if they look too close at it, then you're going to get jacked up. And that's where I think Cody is. Like, I think he might do some things because he, he kind of strikes me as one of them guys that'll talk to a lawyer or talk to a tax attorney. And, They'll tell him, like, say, 15 things. Cody may like thing one, part of thing three, and part of thing five. And so he'll take three and five, combine them, and he'll take one. So he only has, like, one actual thing and then two parts of things and put them together out of 15 things. So he's really only got about two things out of 15 things. And so when he goes and gets audited, He'll sit there and say, it was my understanding that, no, you didn't understand it. And you better hope the IRS man don't catch on to it. Don't <laughs> look too close at it or your ass going to jail. <laughs> in which case, Robin will say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and get up real quick. I'll be back. And she's going to be in a car. <laughs> and she'll be running down the street before you know it. Yeah, man, I haven't seen much about David Willey. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, uh, the only concern I have about the David Woolley relationship, and this is just in general. This isn't about him and about Christine. But I would just be nervous about anybody who is in a 20, 30-year relationship or marriage. Hell, a three- to five-year relationship. And then they leave that relationship and jump right into another relationship. I would be concerned about it. Like, you know, just me. I would, I would just have that natural concern because... You have to take a little time to, to get comfortable with yourself, know yourself, go out on some dates, explore the world a little bit, and then figure out what it is you want, what you're looking for, and what type of relationship you want to be in. Like, just because you were in one bad relationship doesn't mean you necessarily know what a good relationship is. You know, because uh, especially dealing with Cody, 
the bar is so low. And that's that's kind of where I was always a little concerned. Like, I, not that I'm concerned because she's, you know, she's gonna do what she want to do. She, if she's happy, she's happy. If she likes it, I love it. Um, but the one concern that I would always have with anybody, like if you know, if my daughter was in a similar situation or a friend of mine was in a similar situation, is that the bar that Cody set is so low that if a guy, the next person who comes in, they just gotta act like a decent, like a the fuck a decent person. They just got to act like a human being. Like all they got to do is be an adult. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, this dude is amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's not doing anything special. He's just being an adult. <laughs> wow. He actually talks about his feelings, <laughs> you know? Oh, wow. Yeah, I man, I agree with you. They they need to stop giving them money, is is what it comes down to. And even with Deanna Lynn, like uh, Mary did spend COVID alone, and that should have been her first clue. Like, cause you know, as much as Robin sits there and talk about her friend and and them working things out and keeping Mary around, and she can't let Mary go. When you had an opportunity to be Mary's friend, you failed to be Mary's friend. You had every chance to legitimately be Mary's friend and you failed at every turn. And because you failed at every turn, how dare you sit on that on that coyote pass at that raggedy ass bench and look her in the face and question whether she should leave or not. You weren't there for her. Because we could sit here all day and talk about how Cody abandoned her, but Mary, Robin had abandoned her too. And Robin, to be honest with you, by my account, Robin abandoned Mary right around the time she Mary got that divorce for Robin. How about that? That's when that's when uh Robin lost all interest in trying to please Mary and be Mary's friend. She'll be there for Mary, you know. But but that's how users work. Like that you are good to a user and people who use you as long as you're useful. The minute you stop being useful, the minute they stop liking your ass, the minute they stop dealing with you, the minute they stop calling you, you know, it's <laughs> in a way it's like somebody who needs money to borrow money from you. Like as long as you got the money to give them, they'll call you and talk to you and you're the smartest person in the world and, and you know, and, and you're the greatest person ever and they really need it and then you give it to them. Then all of a sudden, like, yo, man, you think I can get that money back? Man, what you talk coming at me for with that little bit of chump money? That chump money. What you coming with that little bit of money? It wasn't a little bit of money when your ass was asking me for it. It wasn't a little then. And I wasn't no chump ass dude who was coming by begging for money when you was needing that money and you came and asked for that money. When when Robin was there asking Mary to get that divorce, her relationship wasn't pathetic then. Mary wasn't pathetic then when she needed Mary for something or to get something off of Mary. She started being pathetic the minute she got what she needed and she got what she wanted. That's when Mary started being pathetic and sad and, and depressing. And she, she didn't want to be around her. And it was a struggle to be around her. So bump that. You know what I mean? Take that as a gift and move on. And even with the love bombing, like, you know, they get they love bomb her. Cause there, she, Mary was happy in Vegas, and this is even the worst part. Mary was happy in Vegas. She liked her house in Vegas. She liked her friends in li her life in Vegas. Cody love bombed Mary to make her think that if she moved to Arizona, they could restart their relationship. At which time he turned around and he dismissed Mary. Once she sold her house and she started getting, she transferred the money that she got from her house to that family account and gave uh, Cody the ability to buy that big ass house for Robin. Then all of a sudden he ain't had no more use for Mary. Then it was Mary. I don't know what the hell you still doing here. Mary, why are you still coming around? Mary, stop wasting my time. Mary, stop calling me. Mary, it's our anniversary. Kiss my ass. I'm hanging out with my family. I'm chilling with my kids. Stop calling there. That's what you said. That, that's a quintessential, like, uh, side chick conversation, ain't it? Like, that's what I would imagine a side chick conversation to be. Like, stop calling me. I'm here with my family. <laughs> Disrespect to my family? I'm here with my kids. No, I'm not coming around your house. <laughs> you know? And that's how they treated Mary. And, that, and I'm t 
tired of watching that shit too. So at the end of the day, I'm happy that Mary broke up with Cody. I'm happy that we're moving past this chapter. Next season, I don't expect to go back and revisit this. I don't want to go back and start talking about how Mary is trying to work it out with Cody and she's still confused. Fuck confused. There's nothing to be confused about. He's been telling you. And my favorite, well, there was something else he said, and this will be the last thing I talk about, I swear. And I'm going to let you guys go so we can all get some sleep and stuff. And, and or some of us can start their day, <laughs> finish their day, hang out. But Cody had looked Mary in the face, and he said the stupidest shit I had ever heard. Well, no, nah, that's a lie. Because Cody said a bunch of stupid shit. That's a lie. See, Cody got me lying. He got me, I'm gaslighting myself. Messing around with Cody's ass. But he said, uh, when Mary has said, well, you know, based on some of the things that you said, talking about him on the um, confessionals, talking shit about her, about how they broke up. And he said, we need to focus on where we are instead of what I said or what I say. Dude, I'll smack the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you nuts? You don't get to do that. You sat here week after week. I've been listening to you for what? Two seasons straight? Talk about how all these people are doing all this shit talking and how it's messing you up and you wish people would keep your name up out their mouth and stop shit talking. You, I've been listening to you for two seasons say that. Now, you sitting there telling Mary... Forget the fact that I'm talking shit about you. Just think about where we are now. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, these are different people. Do not try this shit at home. Okay? Do not. These are trained professionals. Because you try this at home, you will get fucked up. Like, they're, they're, you, part my French. You will get jacked up. This is how you get tossed over a couch. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yo, don't worry about what I be saying about you behind your back. Just think about me being over at your house, smiling in your face. What? I'm too through with Cody. Like, you know what I mean? I'm done with Cody. Because he, cause he's such a, uh, like, like a, <sighs> look. I, I'm trying to keep it cool, and I don't want to be too too mean and too nasty, and I don't want to be too rough. But look, as much as this cat talk about manhood, being a man, what it take to be a man, and what men do, I've never heard. Look, I'm gonna tell you. I'll tell you like this. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. I'm gonna walk the talk. I'm gonna say it. Like, I'm gonna walk it like I talk it. Look, if I said what I said on this show. On this camera, when I'm talking to this camera, I'm not one of these like young folk. I'm an old dude. Like, you know what I mean? I'm a grown ass man, Doc. I've been around a long time. I don't say shit on this camera to this camera that I wouldn't say to Cody's face. Point blank. Period. The end. I'm not going to say nothing on this camera, on this platform that I wouldn't say to somebody's face. If you sitting in front of me, I I'm going to say what I said. And if you say that I said something and I said it, I'm going to tell you that I said it and I'm going to tell you why I said it. I'm not going to back away from what I said or the positions that I'm taking. Now, I'm willing to listen to you and your perspective and your point of view. We can have that conversation. We can have that discussion. But please make no mistake. What I said is what I said. And I'm not going to sit here and say a bunch of stuff behind people's backs and then be upset that they call me out for talking shit behind their back. I've always said, and I've told my kids this, if you say something behind somebody back, to, especially if, unless you're talking to yourself in a room, to yourself, by yourself, if you say it to another human being, anything you say behind somebody back, you better be fully ready to say it to their damn face. If I say it behind your back, trust and believe I'm only practicing on how I'm going to say it to your face. Nine times out of ten, when people sit up there and say, yeah, James was saying da-da-da-da-da, they say, yeah, he told me that already. I already knew that. I already knew that. He's an asshole. Whatever they're going to say about me. But I've already had the conversation with them. So it's not a surprise to them that I said that. 
And with Cody sitting there talking about, I said a bunch of stuff behind your back. Dude, if you a full man, if you a dude, if you the guy, you want to try to be brave and courageous and honest and virtuous and all that shit you were talking about as to why you never left your wives. If you're that guy, you should have had the conversation with her and she should have known fully well where you were before you sat on the couch and told a bunch of strangers who were going to broadcast it out to the world. That shit, I'm embarrassed for you. I'm embarrassed for you, Huss. I'm embarrassed for you. That's embarrassing. You a grown ass man, Doc. You older than Cody is older than me. You older than me, and you sit up there doing that type of shit. I'm gonna talk about Robin and, and, and Mary behind her back, and it, if she approaches me about it, I'm gonna just tell her to ignore it. What? I fully don't want you to ignore it. If it's if I say something and I mean it, then I want you to understand that that's what I mean. I meant it when I said it. Now maybe sometimes you know, it's that stupid part where you maybe you apologize for for saying something rough or saying it wrong, expressing it in a in a in a way that you maybe didn't want to express it. But please make no mistake that he fully meant that shit. He meant that he didn't want to be, when he said he didn't want to be with her, he didn't care about her, that he thinks she dusty, and, and he don't know why she hanging out and all that other, I don't think he ever called her dusty, but that's me saying it. That's the way he come off saying, that's what he's saying to me. That you're saying all these things about her? Please don't pretend like you didn't mean it. Let, let's, not, let's not insult each other. You meant that shit. You meant it. So be a man and tell tell this woman who you've been with for 32 damn years that this is how you feel about it. If you don't want to be in a relationship, I'm not the guy who's going to sit here and tell you that you should stay in a relationship you don't want to be in. Just like I'm not the guy that's going to sit here and tell Christine that she should stay in a relationship that she doesn't want to be in. Or keep, keep herself around and keep herself hanging out in a situation she doesn't want to be in. I'm not going to do that to her. If you don't want to be there, you don't have to be there. Get your stuff. Give them the blessing of goodbye. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your effort. I'm on, I'm out. Be gone. But don't keep people around, floating around, and keep lying to them. That's disrespectful and it's childish. It's childish. And so you're a grown-ass man, Doc. Yeah, I said it. And I meant it when I said it. That's what I expected them to say. If you want to be a G, that's what you say. You want to be that guy? You want to be the nasty manosphere dude? Be that guy. Don't sit up there and lie to her. Don't make you a player because you're a better liar. Be honest. If you that man, if you that dude, then be honest. Tell her the truth. Big shout out to Steve French with the 699 Super Chat. What's up, Steve? <laughs> Janelle Silva with the $2 Super Chat. James, you're amazing. Thank you, Janelle. You're, you're amazing, Janelle. Janelle Silva. You you feel me, Janelle. You know what I'm talking about. Because this is crazy. If you want, like I said, oh, yeah, oh girl, you need to start thinking. About, like, what is this dude? Like a retarded pimp? Like, what are you talking about? Oh, you just, you just don't think about what I'm saying. Just focus on what I'm doing. What? You, you told people that you didn't want to be with me. You told people that you want to be divorced with me. And it's not even a thing where he asked Mary to lie so that they could pretend to be, keep the polygamy propaganda program floating, that their marriage is perfect and they everything is going well and da da da. He told a story about how he's so great, he's so wonderful. This woman is dying to be with him, but he don't want her, and she, he can't get rid of her because she's so she's such a loser that she can't recognize the fact that this awesome man don't want to be with her. That's the story he was telling, and he wanted her to ride with that. Mary, I don't know how you did it. I, I, my hats off to you. Hats off to you, Mary, because you you a better human being than I am. <laughs> you know, you a way better human being than I am. Because there's no way in the world I can stay on that show week after week, year after year, and have somebody. If I if I'm with somebody and they sitting there talking that kind of shit about me behind my back to people, oh this lazy ass mother. Oh he's he, he dusty. Bad and bad. He was terrible. His breath stank. Oh, God. Don't know how to dress. Hate his hairstyle. 
<laughs> you saying all that shit about me behind my back? And I, every week I got to go there and talk about how I love I am with you and, and how I wish we could stay together and we could be together. And, he, and you going to come off there and talk. <laughs> he dusty as hell. Like, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no. No, we different kind of people, man. <laughs> we are different kind of people. Because <laughs> even if... I don't give a shit. Like, even if I, I'm, okay, I want to be with you. It didn't work out. You, I find out you talking shit about me. I'm just going to have to cry in the car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to cry in the car. On my way out. I'm out. Uh, you going to say, just finish watching the show. That shit was reckless. All right, running gray. Yeah, yeah, let's see, let's see. Talking about she, he was going to get back with Mary and things was going to work out. No, it wasn't. It was never going to work out. It wasn't going to work out because as soon as he figured out how to get to your money, your relationship was over. Now, the ironic part is, is it the same, because here's the thing. Cody was talking about karma, I think it was last episode or two episodes ago. Oh, Christine going to suffer the karma. His was karmetic. I don't think that's the word. His was here's his was karma. Here's karma for your ass. Cody's karma. Cody used the OG3 for their money and opportunity. Their money. Christine or uh Janelle for show. Mary for show. Used them for their money. And as soon as he couldn't get the money up off him no more the way he wanted to get off of him, dumped him. Karma. As soon as that money started drying up, Robin going dump his ass. <laughs> Karma is a cold customer. She don't give a shit. <laughs> and usually when Karma show up, she show up with interest. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's never one for one. Like, oh, I, you know, you, you trip somebody and then somebody come back and trip you. Nope. <laughs> you trip somebody and Karma come back and be like, hey, trip them on TV. <laughs> oh man yeah Cody Lizzie B said Cody used these women took all their money yeah he did unjust enrichment Alicia you know alright running gray have a good evening um Dana Lynn the only thing Cody fears is poverty <laughs> so a trailer house is perfect calm I didn't think you know what Dana Lynn I don't think Cody gonna have a trailer house. <laughs> I think Cody gonna have the box the trailer house came in. <laughs> he going this dude gonna be living in a damn refrigerator box. <laughs> Talking about the good old days. <laughs> there was a time when I had three wives. He might have a country song going. My first wife left me, took all my stuff. Kick my ass out now. I'm in a big huff. I'm telling you, it's gonna be rough. And that, that was that's still one of my favorite drums. I might have to try to figure that out. I might put that to a like going to like the garage band or something. Make me a song about uh <laughs> Cody getting put out of Christine's house. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> I came over one day and I and I noticed like I was getting something out of the, the garage and all my shit was in the garage. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what it is. <laughs> and he said and he came. He, said, he saw his stuff in the garage, and he took a picture of himself. Like I don't know. I came back out here. <laughs> it was more my stuff. <laughs> it's like look, Cody's dresser, Cody's books. <laughs> she moved his ass out. Oh man, I was like, yeah, man. When a woman's fed up, brother, she is done. And that's a you know what I mean. And again, if I was Cody's friend. Like, see, Cody hang out with a bunch of guys. I don't know whether these dudes are too nice. They didn't got no experience. Maybe they're afraid of Cody. Maybe they don't tell Cody the truth. But if I was Cody's friend, and I, and he would come to me and be like, yeah, man, you don't understand. She, like, talked to me and told me she don't want me in her place. Well, what? She said that she don't want me in her place because she said this uh, bedroom is special to me and don't nothing special happen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Your lady said that your bedroom... It's her special place and don't nothing special. Special. She used those exact words. Special. 
She said special. You better get over there. <laughs> Man, you need to go to the gym. You better sit your ass in that sauna for about 10 minutes. Go get yourself in that whirlpool. Stretch heavy. <laughs> Start drinking some of this orange juice and get your ass over there. You need to put in some back work, player, because you, you in trouble. You about to get dumped. Take these flowers with you. Matter of fact, get some money out the bank. Take her to the, this restaurant. Go ahead. Romantic dinner. Take her back. You got to put some work in. Because <laughs> you in trouble. There's no nothing special. Bitch, you better get <laughs> You about to lose your wife. <laughs> and I'm going to keep it all the way in stack. Truth of the matter is, I talk all that shit. You need to go there, big, do this, that, put some back work in, blah, blah, blah. You put that, put as much back work in as you want. When push them down and shove, bruh, when a woman is done, she is fucking done. Christine was done. Like, there's nothing that he could do. That would have repaired that situation. And that's the crazy part about it. Even now, like he's breaking up with Mary. He's still talking about Christine leaving. When Christine left, she, she left and she didn't even give a shit. Yeah. That's how it happens. She already, the negotiation that you were looking for already happened. It wasn't when she broke up with you and when she packed your stuff up. That's not when she decided. It wasn't when she when she packed your stuff up. Isn't when the the time for you to be able to figure it out and get back in. That wasn't the time when you could figure it out and get back in. It was already done. When she packed your shit up, the conversation was already had and done and finished. Your opportunity to realize that you was about to get put out of your house. You have to listen and pay attention to what's going on, and you have to look for the signs. You ran her through it. You made her cry one too many freaking times. Now, you can't, up, like, and the crazy part is, you can put a woman through a lot of shit. And this is just from my experience. And, and having friends and, and talking to people and knowing people and seeing a lot of different situations. You can put a woman through a lot of shit. And she'll take a lot of shit. And she'll she'll be there. She'll ride with you. She'll rock with you. She'll, you know, okay, we'll just, you know, we'll work it out. Blah, 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 blah. But I don't know when it is. And I don't think she knows. She can't tell you how much shit she can take. But when she hit her miles, when she's done and she's gone as far as she can go with you, there is no rolling the, the odometer back on that. When she's done and she's finished, that's it. It don't matter what you do. It don't matter what you say or how you feel about it. She's finished. And that's where Cody's ass was. You know, you know what I mean? When he got put out of Christine's house. And he still can't figure it out. And that's the stupid part about it. That, and you're doomed to keep repeating the same mistake. If you can't figure out what you mistakes you made and what and and your part in the relationship falling apart, then every relationship you have after that is going to fall apart the same exact way. And I and I've said that about life. Like sometimes, in my perspective, life will uh give you opportunities to learn certain lessons. And unless you learn that lesson, you'll keep repeating that lesson. So life, will, something will happen. And if you don't take from that, the thing that you should know about that thing so that you can improve upon it so that you, you can move on, then you just going to keep learning that life lesson. You're going to keep repeating it. And Cody's in a situation now where he's just repeating that same lesson. And even as Christine said, she said something tonight that I've been saying for years. By Christine leaving, it gave the other wives the, the ability to see the possibility that they could leave. This is why in so many of these groups, they always try to limit the other people's ability to leave. And if you leave, they want you to completely leave and be completely isolated and shunned from the group. Because once you're shunned and kicked out of the group and removed from the group, then you can no longer show these other ladies that it's possible for you to leave, that, it, that you can find happiness outside of these marriages. And to them, that's the most dangerous thing that you could do is walk out of there and have a smile on your face when you do it. It scares the shit out of them. That's why... When Mary failed, tried to leave, and she failed, they love keeping Mary around. Every time one of them talked about leaving, don't be a Mary. 
Don't be a Mary. What are they going to see now? Don't be a Christine out there happy as hell, in love with a new man, getting married. <laughs> Dude, come home every night, pay attention to it. Don't be a Mary. <laughs> Don't be a Christine. You know, that's why it doesn't work. That's why they spend so much time trying to isolate these ladies away from everybody else. And so that is the power, the power of association. And that's what they're afraid of. And Cody, he's just doomed to keep repeating it. You know. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Christine was able to show them the way. And then once, and you notice, like, once Christine left, that all of a sudden her other relationships started falling apart because, you know, as they say, these chicks started getting uppity. <laughs> they started getting uppity. And they, they realized they had power in this relationship. That can't be a thing. <laughs> and Cody's talking about his place in the church. Here's the ironic part about it, too. Because Cody lost his wives the way he lost his wives, and the fact that they were able to move on and move up from him, he would be kicked out of the church himself. As crazy as it is. That's my suspicion. Can't prove it, but that's my suspicion. The reason why he would be kicked out is because he created a scenario, a situation where these women left this relationship and they moved on and they did better upon leaving. And most of these, they can't handle that kind of stuff. They don't want to, they can't have him around because if he's around, then he's a reminder to other wives in this in this sect that this is a possibility. That you know, he, you see him. He used to have four wives. What happened to his other three wives? Oh, they left him. Well, what are they doing now? They they living in you know down by the railroad tracks, you know, cooking hot dogs on on dirty sticks. Nope. <laughs> Christine married herself a developer. She's doing well. She's going on vacations. She just got back from a a cruise. With her best friend Janelle, who also left him, she's doing well financially. Mary got her own place. She, you know, Lizzie's in. Yeah, she she owns that. And she, yo, what they, they sell clothes out the back. Yeah, yeah, she doing. Everybody doing good. That's him. And that's why he can't be around either. How about that? All right, Nicola Dow. And uh, you know what, guys? I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go. I gotta wrap this up because I don't want to uh, drag this out too long. Like some power drive safely. But uh thank you guys for hanging out with a player. I enjoyed you. I hope you enjoyed me. Please look out for my videos. I'm, I think I'm gonna do the uh motivation Monday video, so watch for that. It's gonna be some stuff, not necessarily tied in the sister wives, but hopefully it's something that you guys can use. Maybe get your motivation Monday going, get your Mondays popping so you can hit that week right. We got the holidays coming up if you're here in America for Thanksgiving. Hope you guys stay safe for that. Remember, traffic safety takes no holiday. So if you're traveling, make sure you take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Be responsible if you're out there, you know, boop, boop. Make sure you have a good time and keep the good times flowing and keep it rolling the safe and secure way. I appreciate everybody for uh, hanging out with me, especially this late. I know some of y'all... Got things to do in the morning. I got I got to get up crazy early, too. So, I appreciate that. Alicia, love you guys, too. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. You guys hung out with me. Hung in there with me. <laughs> we had, Hopefully, we had some laughs. Just scrapping, AK. <laughs> Catherine Green with the 499 Super Chat. Good night, James, and group chat. Okay. Just scrapping me, holding me down. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Because like I said, I was talking to this camera early and it was a lonely feeling. <laughs> and I realized nobody was listening to me. I was on there just going too. Yeah, you guys ain't gonna believe it. And they're like, what? I'm not on. <laughs> Thank you guys. Oh yeah, and don't forget to hit that like button on your way out. Appreciate that. Thanks for reminding me. I'm so bad at that stuff. I get to talking and stuff. I'll be forgetting that I'm supposed to be promoting the like button and the subscribe button. But please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. Welcome to the My Take family. The My Take Armada. We're not an army. We are Armada. 
All right, guys. Have a great night. That's my take. I'm James. This has been my take on reality. And I'm out.